Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com, with over 200,000 audio programs to choose from, Audible has you covered. Horror, mystery, true crime, sci-fi, nonfiction, and more. All narrated by A-list celebrities and very unique performers. Go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash SOS radio. That's audibletrial.com forward slash SOS radio. And claim your free 30-day trial and free audiobook now. That's audibletrial.com forward slash SOS radio. This episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast is brought to you by Grammarly.com. Grammarly. Built by linguists and language lovers, Grammarly's writing app finds and corrects hundreds of complex writing errors instantly. So you don't have to. Copy and paste any English text into Grammarly's online text editor or install the free Grammarly extension for Chrome, Firefox, and Safari and get to writing. Download Grammarly now for free at www.getgrammarly.com forward slash ghost. That's getgrammarly.com forward slash ghost. Bring Grammarly's powerful algorithm straight to wherever you are writing online. Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and more. What are you waiting for? Download Grammarly for free at getgrammarly.com forward slash ghost. Welcome to the 64th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. So damn paranormal. Ow! Yow! I think that's copyrighted, guys. My name is Jason Knight, host of the show, and with me this evening are is... <laughs> Lexi Raven. And... Oscar Spectre. Oscar motherfucking Spectre. Producer extraordinaire. Folks, it is late. It's one thirty in the morning, April 14th. And We've been tomorrow. drinking. You got work on Tuesday. It's Saturday. <laughs> I work tomorrow at 5. 5 p.m. 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. 5 p.m. tomorrow? Yeah. Dude, that's like a, a lifetime that's a away. a week from now. <laughs> She's complaining. I know. <laughs> So we're, we've been drinking, we've been having a good time. The lights are turned low, the drinks are flowing, the ceremonial candle is lit. And then we're going to talk it's about something lit. serious with all that. And, it's lit. And oh my God. Boy, turn off our mic. And boy, <laughs> do we have an episode for you tonight. Fair warning, it's going to be long, it's going to be technical. And thick. Sorry. Were you oh, oh no, I was describing the episode. Okay. Not your, you know. Thank you. My arm. Your salchicha. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, so this one's gonna get, it's gonna be long, it's gonna get deep, it's gonna get technical, but I promise at the end of the day I think you're gonna like it. Yeah. What do you think, Oscar? We almost started a recording on April, on April thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth. Yes. I met here at, well, I got here at eleven thirty, right? So that's right, so it was still the thirteenth, yeah. Yeah. But it would have been nice to say, Oh, we're recording on Friday the thirteenth. But I guess we're technically not anymore. Listeners, just pretend. Let's pretend. Just yeah. pretend. Anyone saw any Friday the thirteenth movies out there or um no, did you know I had a signed Jason mask, though? Did I show you that? I know that every time you bring it up, I feel jealous. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm talking with you. Yes, I knew that already. Yes. It's good. It's pretty badass. Yeah. Um, anything you guys want to mention before we jump into the show? It's a long one, so I want to get started. But anything you guys want to mention? Lexi, how was your trip? My trip was <coughs> awesome. How are them chakras, girl? My chakras are fantastic. <laughs> Perfectly aligned. Aligned as... Aligned as fuck. As only chakras can be. The funny thing is that the, the, they always align exactly, no matter what. <laughs> right, I mean, and you could even bend your body well, in yeah, half but and they they're could still be, like, in line. Unbalanced or like overactive yeah, un- or underactive. So yeah, what, yeah, but doesn't make them unaligned. Well, what was going on with your chakras? My chakras? Yeah, you don't have to say it that way. Uh, oh, you know, the usual, the blockages... But it's fine because being in the mountains high up in 
the oh, I thought you were going to say you were high. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, that's what you were going. But I did see this really cool so- souvenir of these little rocks, and it said we got stone. We got stoned in Arizona. And like they're this, rocks. They rocks. I get it. Yeah. I get. It. I see you got Oscar at Arizona hat. Yeah. I did get I told him I just in want Arizona one thing. Hat. Did you bring me back anything at all? To my presence? <laughs> I get fucked. Every time I turn around, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting fucked by somebody. Yeah, you do. No wonder well, you're shitting a little weird these I, days. Yeah, I'm telling you. Give me back my whiskey, goddammit. <laughs> that one that's show um, have a drink. Um, excuse you. It's halfway now. It, you call that halfway? <laughs> that is not halfway. It's. Listen, I don't know what kind of mathematics you're doing. Yeah. The mathematical but, uh, kind? Well, welcome back. We missed you last episode. We I did mention you. missed you guys, too. We did mention you. Oscar, what's been up with you, yo? Th- nothing. I got nothing interesting going on. At all. <coughs> oh, right into the mic. That's good. He <laughs> shaved that, his face. I did that on purpose. <gasps> Oscar did, that on purpose. did shave his face. By the face. way, only other people find this interesting. I did it basically because I, I mistakenly shaved too much. <laughs> and I just say, fuck it. Let's just do the whole thing. That's it. That's all I thought about it. But er, the second I got stepped out of the bathroom, everyone was like, oh, look at Oscar. He <laughs> shaved up 10 years on his life. And all this shit. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, There's people looking into your bathroom I'm window. Hello. Say, I'm yelling at people like, get a life. Get a life. <laughs> We're just so used to seeing you no, for so I'm long. No, I'm messing with you. I get you it. Know, same I, way for so long. You look great. You I look, get it. I get it. You look Yeah, babyish. babe. You look okay. And Lexi said, and she hates it. She loves soft. it. She loves it when I have a full thing going on. I really ah. do. Prefers it that way. That's how she met me. Yeah, with that, oh, that's how so I was I like first like attracted and noticed him. And, well, you was see, the I, goatee. that's how I knew Oscar when I first met him. Yeah. Bare face like that. Really? Yeah. Baby faced. Baby face. Yes, that's bare right. Face, baby face. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought you meant like bear face, like a grizzly bear. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> no, but other words, you know that this is something interesting. If you know we're on the show now, um, I don't know what it was, and I would say it, lo- it looks like it could be something harmless. But I was driving. Uh, this was some afternoon, late afternoon, like towards sunset. Yeah, sunset. Um, I forget which day it was, but it was like about a week ago. It was a weekday. I was driving home, um, and I saw over uh, Narragansett. Nagel Avenue, if you live in Chicago. I know exactly um, I saw uh, planes symmetrically driving, uh, driving, flying a uh, certain amount of space apart from each other, slowly, and in synchronization. So I may have an answer to that. Okay, I hope you do, because they, were, they weren't like I little know... planes. They weren't jets. They were like big planes, it looked like. So I know Hillary Clinton was coming to Chicago. Yeah, okay. It had to be something like that. I just don't know what day. So I bet you that could have been her plane and her escort, I wonder. Well, they're, dry- they're going very slow. Really? I mean, pretty slow. Yeah, I, were I, they I, heading towards O'Hare, do you think? Uh, let me think about that. No, they were not. Not? No, O'Hare. they were not. They were they're going away from me. I was driving home. I, come, I was driving from O'Hare that way, so they're going my way. So no. Um, oh. I, I turned on to Montrose, and then uh, they were going that way. Towards what color were they? Did you, no, you know? it was that, it wasn't uh, that it wasn't the, the lights were um, obstructing the color. But I know they were bigger. They were what, bigger. What formation did they make? It was just a straight line. Oh, a straight line. A straight line oh. across the horizon. Really? The horizon. I mean, there's like at least at least five to ten, something like that. Like five to ten, or something like that. Oh yeah, you told me about oh, this. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, if anyone in our, any of our Chicago listeners saw that within the last what? Week and a half? Week, week, yeah, about a week. Week? Yeah. Let us know. Contact at Chicago Goes Podcast. By the time this comes out, it'll be more like a week and a half, I guess. That's interesting. Yeah. There's been a lot of sightings yeah. in Illinois, in the Chicagoland area. Yeah. And you're, I mean, where you're at, where you were, you're not 100 miles from O'Hare Airport. You're probably a good 15 minute drive from O'Hare Airport. Yeah. There's been that's a lot it. of no UFO more than that. sightings at yeah. O'Hare. It was from there. No one um, seemed to care. I mean, was, they were so noticeable, though. You, just gotta, you look up from the traffic sign when you're stopping at a whatever, well, and here's, you can just see it. It's really interesting because there's something called the Oz effect. Hmm. Listeners, you could look this up. Dr. Um, Oz? No. Wizard of? What did you call him off air? Draws. Dra- the Draws. Dr. The draws. Oz. The Draws. Yeah. yeah, look this up. It's called the Oz effect. Okay. And it's essentially what you're saying. One person could be having this just life-shaking exper- UFO experience. Yeah, and the people next to them, the house next to mm-hmm. the person experiencing this event, experiences absolutely nothing. Oh, it's mm-hmm. almost like the person doing the having the experience is in their own time loop, their own time warp. 
Everything else is going on as normal around mm-hmm. them, but just that one person, that one household okay. is experiencing We're having a things. mini show now. I have so many follow-up questions. It seems like, from a cynical point of view, it seems like it's just a way of saying, like, okay, you're crazy, but does you find a way to make it seem like only you <laughs> sure. only you see it? Right? It seems a little too But it happens to enough too people clean. Right. To, to where they actually came seems up a with a little too neat. This, the right. A little effect. too convenient. But besides that. Or think about abduction experiences. People claim that a UFO lands in their front yard and they have, that's the last thing we remember, they have you know eight hours of missing time, mm-hmm. but yet no one else in the neighborhood, no other animals in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. nothing else was affected or reacted to this supposed event. So you're saying in my Positive case, effect. I would be the one person that sees it and notices it? You would be it? the one person that notices it. Huh. Honest to God, look it up. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, it, but it, it looked like it looked like planes, though. It didn't like I can't. I mean, it could have been UFOs, I guess, but I I couldn't tell. Yeah. But they were big enough where they weren't like jets or like sh- charter planes. Uh, they were bigger than that. I know that much. Were they the same size as like commercial airliners? Like about the same. The sky, about the same. Yeah. Maybe but all looked, flying in formation. Yeah. Not towards O'Hare. Nope. Straight Slowly. Line. Wow. I could have followed them if I wanted to, but I wanted to go home. That's crazy. I didn't really think about it. I, I was just like noticing it strange. I texted this girl about it, and that's it. That's that's the extent of my involvement hmm. or even care about it. I just wanted to I would love that. to see something like that. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Well, Hopefully I'm listeners, happy. maybe someone from Chicago saw that and knows, oh, that was exa- that was Hillary Clinton. Or, yeah, I saw it too. That was just 10 American Airlines flights coming all in at the same time. But right. maybe someone out there knows. Yeah, I was thinking, is there an airplane show? And then these guys are leaving? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> well, th- think about it. So, I mean, where you're at, you see planes All probably a hundred times a day. If yeah. you looked up, you could if probably cared, see a hundred right. times. Yeah. Choppers, too. But this now. particular thing mm-hmm. stuck out to you. Yeah. See, that right there is interesting. And who knows? Maybe you were, uh, you know, had the Oz effect going on. I don't I know. I mean, I should ask Joe. He lives around my area, too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Erie, Dave Black, not here. But that's okay. We're going to truck on. Yeah. Um, before we begin the episode... There are. I believe we've been 20 minutes into there this. There is quite a bit of uh, <laughs> feedback that we've received uh, since the last episode, so I want to make sure. Oh. Yes, and give these people a shout-out, as promised. So uh, one of them, we received a great Facebook rating from Aaron Shriver. Aaron gave us five stars on Facebook, and he wrote, Great podcast. Would love to have y'all on investigation sometimes. Great podcast. I would Did love you say to have... From? I believe he's from Chicago. Okay. So that's why he's like, oh, you know, we should, I'd love to have you guys in an investigation. So I believe Aaron's from Chicago. So who knows? Maybe we can make that happen. Aaron, thank you very much for yeah. listening. Thanks, bro. All right. Also, I want to send a shout out to John John Marino, uh, Marino, who left us an awesome rating on iTunes. John John writes, love the show. Just started listening. Interesting topics and funny cast. Five stars. That means a lot to us, John John. We hope you keep uh, entertained, and yes. please keep listening. We're here every Tuesday. Uh, tip your waiters. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Um, of course, I have to say hello to Maria Zlada, our YouTube honey. MZ. <laughs> I think she follows the show on YouTube. That's how she yeah. listens. So a big hello, and thank you for watching and listening, Maria. Uh, actually, you know, it was Joe's idea when we first started this podcast to also put them on Facebook. Uh, oh, God, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Stupid alcohol. I know what you meant. Uh, to put it on YouTube, I'm like, ah, eh, I don't know. But you know, we pick up listeners like Maria. So that was nice. a good idea from Joe. Definitely. And people tend to comment more on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. I mean, for good or NL, but yes, yeah. they comment more. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, we have to give an extra special shout-out to uh, – Carl, so, so yes. fuck the other shout-outs no, compared no. to this one. Well, this one, well, you'll saying. see why in a second. I'm fucking with you, so, I'm just <laughs> giving you salt. Extra special shout-out to Carl Keel Jr. Carl, I hope I'm saying your, right, uh, your last name correctly, of K7 Studio mm-hmm. right here in Chicago. Carl's the first person to actually leave us feedback on Facebook and on iTunes and let us know that he did so. Carl gave us five stars, and he wrote, This is a great paranormal podcast. Always keeps you informed and entertained. They cover a wide variety of great paranormal subjects. I haven't found a bad episode by them yet. <laughs> you go back to our catalog. Watch. Uh, yeah. You're not done yet. Episode 13. Those single digits <laughs> um, uh, shows are... 
something. Now, of course, listeners should know, we've mentioned this a ton of times on the, on the podcast, that if they leave us a ratings on iTunes and they let us know that they did so, if they find a way to let us know, mm-hmm. Carl's Way was leaving the exact same review with the exact same username on Facebook. Nice. So you know it's him and it's not someone perpetrating. Right. Um, if listeners do that, if they leave us the iTunes ratings and they let us know, we'll send them something cool as well as giving a mention on the show. Oh, the clue is very subjective. It is. It's up to our discretion. That's right. But Carl, he was easy on us, and he asked that instead of sending him something, could we please just instead plug his business for him? Oh, hey, look at that. And Carl, brother, it would be our pleasure. Listeners, Carl's awesome Chicago-based business is a fine art and graphic design company called K7 Studio. Web design, photography, graphic design, and a fine art print gallery. To contact K7 Studio, call 1-708-603-3972. That's 1-708-603-3972. Or visit www.k7studio.com. That's K-S-E-V-E-N studio.com so word seven not number seven like the movie yeah k7 could also be found on facebook at k7 studio now that's k number seven studio oh shit yeah so i want to make sure and point this out yeah facebook.com whack k7 studio the number seven and he's on insta at k7 studio that one listeners is spelled out k s e v e n studio so Carl Keel Jr., thank you for the awesome feedback. Hope you enjoy the plug uh, for your business. Listeners, check out K7 Studio, www.k7studio.com, all spelled out. Yeah, I'm checking it out right now. Pretty dope, right? It was yeah. a good week for us. I wonder if he can uh, do a little project for me. Let's see. Oh, Carl. Yeah, maybe. Oscar Specter might be hiring you. Yeah. Anyway, I did check out his photography and stuff. On yeah. the, it's beautiful. There was one he took from Tony Seville's Pirates Alley, the old uh, absinthe house in New Orleans. Yeah. And it was just a close up of an absinthe presentation, and I knew what it was right away because I've been in New Orleans so many goddamn times. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a beautiful shot. Um, he also did this uh, ultra cool Chicago subway maps. Okay. On, like stone. It's it's so fucking cool. Hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely hire him, Oscar. K7 cool. Studios, folks. Look him up. Um, also, you know, be sure to visit our website, chicagoghostpodcast.com, chicagoghostpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, at Chicago Ghost Podcast, at Chicago Ghost Podcast on Facebook. Find us on Twitter and Insta at Chicago Ghosts, at Chicago Ghosts, and contact us at contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. Send us an email about anything. And of course, I got to plug this. If you love what we're doing on the podcast and you want us to do more, better, uh, send us on crazier podcast trips and hopes we get hurt, maimed, or killed, become our patron. <laughs> Go to patreon.com slash supernatural occurrence studies podcast, or just go to patreon.com and search supernatural occurrence, uh, and you'll find us. And by That's- becoming our patron, you'll, you'll get access to commercial-free podcasts, bonus audio and video, stickers, mentions on the show, and a whole lot more. Oscar, uh, sorry. Occurrence is two C's and two R's. Helpful reminder. <laughs> That's right. Very good. Yes. Common misspelling. A lot of spelling bees get fucked for that. That's right. Um, and uh, what kind of bonus audio are we going to do? We got to, we got to do that shit. Then. We always have just I don't know, like hours of outtakes at the end of an episode. I mean, uh, bonus yeah, uh, YouTube do. footage. Oh, that's you know, what you mean. that okay. we shoot from different. Oh, that's good. I didn't. I didn't get this in my fucking outline or anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I want to start recording some of our podcasts. Definitely, definitely. Recording session. I'm going to start videotaping. Uh, do people still say videotaping? I don't know. I mean, we're forgiving you because you're past forty. <laughs> I'm not past forty. I am forty. Um, he's closer to fifty, guys. Uh, he's sensitive. What are they going to say? He's fucking. Sens- say he's already forgiving. Manhattan old fashions. No, uh, yeah, I blame that. Right? No, really, was not the old age of forty nine. What are you now? <laughs> oh, I want to start uh, 
videotaping uh, our podcast sessions and just the hijinks that happens right now, you know, during our recordings. I think if we do one, you know, one like what porn shoot, I think we get a lot more out of it than anything else. Hey, if you become a $10 a month patron, we will <laughs> shoot a Supernatural Occurrence Studies porn. Yeah, it goes just running amok. I'm not... Not saying how hardcore it'll be or what will be involved, but it will be a point. Ghost orgies. Yes. Gorgies. Gorgies. Yes. <gasps> what? With Patented. With Gorgies. Right. Patented. Okay. Patented. We're going to come up with something for that. Okay. Do it. Gorgies. Write it down. I love it. Do it. G-H-O-R-G-I-E-S? Yes. Patented. That's ours. <laughs> that is good. Nice. I'm telling you, you're going to come up with something. I'm just riffing here. Yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to mention our YouTube. Find us on YouTube, guys. We've got tons of cool shit on YouTube. Yeah, Chicago's check out MC. own Supernatural Current Studies on YouTube. Okay. I'm Anything else? That's kind of housekeeping. Uh, yeah. I mean, most people skip this housekeeping. Wait, what? Most people tend to skip housekeeping and podcasts. Well, I promise listeners, if they leave us ratings, we'll, re- we'll read them. So, Not everyone, I'm saying. Most people. We got Aaron Shriver, we got John John Marino, we got Maria Zlada, we got Carl Keel in K7 Studios. We have all of our contact information, we got the Patreon, yeah. YouTube. Um, yeah. yeah. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're excellent. We're in excellent shape to talk about something. Oh, man. All right. Well, no are, music, no we nothing. Doing? We're what rolling we into it. What are we doing today? I'm telling you right now, tonight's episode, it has it all conspiracy the most advanced technology on the planet science ghosts demons science parallel dimensions and even alternate universes the mandela effect and the devil himself hold on to your hat listeners this one is nuts now i've been interested in this topic for quite some time i'm just too stupid to understand it but about a week ago a week and a half ago my travel to Upper Michigan was canceled, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a massive snowstorm that came through, um, and I couldn't travel. So okay. I told Katie, my wife, and she's like, awesome, you're staying home. But so you know, you were supposed to be out of town. So I invited 15 people over to the house, all of my daughter Talia's friends and their parents. Oh, I thought she was going to say, like, this, we do orgies when you go. No gorgies. No gorgies. Uh, maybe she does. I don't know. You don't know. I, don't know. I know what happens around here. <laughs> Uh, so all these little girls were going to be around the house and all their parents. Uh, so she's like, so I don't know what you want to do. Strangers to you. Great where you're going to – yeah, they're, they're basically strangers to me. Yeah. I don't go outside my circle. Yeah, I know. I don't. You know that. Um, so tons of little girls, all these parents, people I don't really know. So my wife's like, awesome, you're home, but I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> well, I locked myself in my office nice. for literally eight hours, and I figured, uh, well, shit, this is the perfect time to research – this interest of mine, hmm. CERN. 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 The European Organization for Nuclear Research. CERN. Now, that's not the acronym, but uh, I guess CERN in, in, um, in what language is CERN the acronym? French. French, got it. Yeah, okay. so, and I get, listen, I don't know French, but the, the real name is the Conseil European pour la Recherche <laughs> Nucléaire. Nuclear. Nuclear. C E R N. CERN. And there goes our French listeners. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, CERN Laboratory. Have you heard of CERN before, Oscar? When I said we're going to mention we're gonna, this is what we're going to be talking about? Definitely have. Okay. Uh, it's crazy. The it's shit a, that's out there is nuts. Like, um, if I was a more responsible individual or if I was more into, like, numbers and, uh, you know, like, if I didn't mind, like, tedious wet work, you know, with a lot of paper and a lot of, like, research and studying and that kind of thing. If it was a real, like, n- book nut like that, I would definitely want to be a CERN scientist or a scientist there. Really? A, a particle physicist? Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. String theory shit. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is, I mean, you cannot look up a topic on CERN without getting drawn down some other rabbit hole. Yeah. Yeah. That's Next true. thing you know. Hours have gone by, and you're like, "Wait, what the fuck was I searching for to begin with?" Yeah, because now I'm so now I'm reading about black holes and alternate dimensions and demons and satanic activity mm-hmm. and the Hindu god Shiva, and it's just a crazy, crazy mess. This topic will never end, so I had to kind of pick and choose 
what we're going to talk about. That's tonight. why when I came into it, I'm like, is this like a three part show? Because right. there's a lot of information. No, I'm going to try to plow through it. There's okay. a lot of scientific stuff. Uh, a lot of physics information because I think you need to understand how uh, yes. the technology Good. works. I'm glad you said that because I was going to say I was going to demand that. Yes. That we go oh, through the technical stuff, what it's meant to do, what's actually achieving in a, in a way we can um, say what's going on like chemically, scientifically. Yes, I got you covered. Before we get into the – okay, cool. Got you covered. So the CERN laboratory itself sits astride the Franco-Swiss border near Geneva, Switzerland. So this isn't okay. – CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, what we're going to be talking about, isn't here in the U.S. But that's not to say there aren't other large colliders here in the U.S. Yeah, we and have we have one. across the globe. We have one, right? <laughs> You'll see. Okay. And this all ties into the the, the – I don't want to just say conspiracy about CERN, but the conspiracy about CERN. And we're going to get into this. What all these accelerators and decelerators and experiments that CERN is doing, what it's causing to our, our world and our, our planet world universe. Yeah. Crazy, 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 crazy stuff. So founded in 1954, CERN uses the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments to better understand particle physics the study of the fundamental constituents of matter and the forces acting between them. At CERN, particles are made to collide together via what's called the Large Hadron Collider at close to the speed of light. This process gives CERN's physicists clues about how the particles interact and provides insights into the fundamental laws of nature. Now, at times, in order to reach the near speed of light, particles can travel the Large Hadron Collider, accelerating for up to 10 hours straight, traveling a total of, <laughs> this is great, traveling a total of 6.213711192 times 10 to the ninth power miles before the perfect speed is achieved. That's crazy. So these things are just ramping up, boom, boom, spinning. It's a, it's a gigantic. It takes. It's like a miles long thing, isn't it? Or is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Very expensive too to make. It it is the most expensive science project yeah. in history. Yeah, I believe it. The most complex, sophisticated piece of machinery on the planet in yeah. history. I believe that. So. Uh, the instruments used in particle experiments are called particle accelerators, because that's exactly what it's doing. It's cranking up these these different particles, circling the Hedron Collider 6.213 whatever times 10 to 9 miles per hour to reach speed of light, right? So the instruments used in the experiments are particle accelerators and detectors. So we got accelerators and we have detectors. The particle accelerators boost beams of particles to high energies before the beams are made to collide with each other or with other stationary targets. Mm -hmm. um, and the detectors observe, the res observe and record the results of these collisions. Right. So the accelerators make them hit, and the detectors uh, understand what was the result of that hit, that collision. Now, uh, of course, I want to focus on the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider. That's okay. what everyone knows. The LHC, located at CERN. As I said, the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Mm -hmm. The Large Hadron Collider filed, fired up for the first time on September 10th, 2008. It's 16.77 miles long, Damn. and sits over 575 feet underground. It took 10 years and over $9 billion to build. Now, the Large Hadron Collider, it's built underground because scientists tell us that the Earth's crust protects us from radiation um, from the LHC uh, and, and probably protect us from whatever other, whatever other unseen consequences result from CERN experiments. So they figure if we put this bad boy underground, because they don't know what the, the results of these experiments are going to be. They have no idea. I mean, for all they know, making underground is worse, but they don't know that until they, they don't know. Um, you know, colliding a particle could cause space-time to collapse. So they figure, put it as deep underground as we can. Hopefully the Earth's crust will protect humanity and the universe right. from what we're doing down here. 
Uh, I have a question. When you were talk- talking about the creation of CERN and the super collider, which is another word for a super collider, right? Um, or, is, or am I wrong there? I've heard it mentioned that way too. So I don't know. Yeah, definitely not a scientist here, folks. It's okay. Um, uh, my question is that isn't it? Uh, isn't that what I thought they wanted their original intention, among others, obviously, is um, this expensive science experiment is to basically recreate the Big Bang in a laboratory setting. Yes. Isn't that, isn't that part of it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. And we're going to get to that for sure. And now I don't know if I mentioned it, but the 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 Large Hadron Collider it's it's a oval. It's an oval. Yes. It's a almost seventeen mile long oval that yes. these particles accelerate around and then eventually collide. Yeah. And the detectors uh, understand or try to understand the result of those collisions. Make sense so far? I'm with you. <laughs> so am. how does so we got to understand how does the Large Hadron Collider work? Um, how does it smash together almost 600 million particles per second? Now, I'm not a physicist, but this is how I would explain it. Basically, electric fields accelerate particles, and insane magnets focus these particles. With the Large Hadron Collider, there are three main components we should really concern ourselves with. And again, folks, I'm keeping this simple, as simple yeah. as I can. Layman's terms. Yes. Yes. One component is the accelerator. The accelerator is that almost 17-mile-long oval tube, if you will, of superconducting magnets. And with the accelerator, magnets are the key. Thousands of magnets of different intensities are used to direct particle beams through the accelerator. At different stages of this process, powerful energy field generators, also known as accelerating structures, are used to further accelerate and focus particles for the collision. Remember, physicists have to get these particles moving at the speed of light, and at the very last second, prior to collision, another insane magnet is used to squeeze the particles as closely together as possible to increase the chances of a collision. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, the particles CERN physicists are trying to control and collide are so small you could liken it to firing two needles at one another from over six miles away and having them meet point to point at the halfway mark. Yep. Crazy, right? Just and picture exactly that. The halfway point, yeah. Picture that. So the 17 mile long tube, the magnets, and the ex- accelerating structures together make the accelerator. And the accelerator is cold. Liquid helium is constantly pumped through a complex system of pipes that run both inside and outside the accelerator, keeping the Large Hadron Collider colder than interstellar space. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Colder than interstellar space. So the point of that is to what? These magnets and these um, accelerating uh, areas. The, um, keeping it cold does what, though? That keeps it, keeps it from melting, literal meltdown, because these magnets get so hot. I bet, okay. And these um, accelerating points, uh, what were they called? Kind of like they put fans on computers, kind of like that? Exactly. Okay. Yes, good. Well, um, I was just curious if maybe the particles have to be cold, because I guess if you want to recreate matter, I mean, it comes from the cold space anyway, makes sense, or maybe heating it up changes it, you know, because heat applied to anything changes its composition, right? So could be. That makes sense, too. Could be. That's something you learn in Science 101. Yeah, but it's okay. those magnets, those accelerating structures that have to be kept cold. Right. Okay. Colder than, or cold as cold as space. space. It's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. Okay, so the second component that we need to be aware of is what I would simply call inside the accelerator. Inside the Large Hadron Collider, there are two separate beam pipes, two more tubes, inside which high-energy particle beams travel in opposite directions at close to the speed of light, which are then made to collide. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty simplistic uh, in layman's terms, I guess. Just these two tubes, particles are whipping around in opposite, opposite directions, and scientists make them collide. Boom. Yeah. All right. Now, the third component we should be concerned with is actually made up of four separate, very important items called detectors. Particle collision can take place inside the beam pipes within the accelerator and be observed observed at four different detector locations. 
Okay, so scientists could make these particles uh, collide um, at four different stages within the accelerator. Okay. okay. Um, these collision points, these detectors, are called ATLAS, CMS, or CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. LHCB. So ATLAS, CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. And each detector searches for different particle collision results. Okay, that makes sense. So And records, so you need something to record it. Right, right. Okay. So the first detector, ATLAS, which is the largest particle detector ever constructed, sits in a cavern 328 feet below ground, and it investigates a wide range of physics, including the search for the Higgs boson, um, for the God particle, in other words. Mm. Uh, more on that later. It searches for extra dimensions, dark matter, and black holes. How do you first search for something that you... Like I, okay, black, uh, dark holes I understand because that has been proven, even though it's been proven in a way where no man has ever come close to a black hole to actually see. Mm-hmm. They've but as much as, created them. But right, but the point is that that's something provable. How can you look for something that you c- can't prove yet? Do you know that's a that's a rhetorical question because I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking in, in to ask because I'm sure someone's coming up with that question. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, they have all. Well, I mean, um, it's like a, it's a like this, saying like I'm looking for unicorns, and that's part of this is all theoretical. <laughs> right, it's all theoretical. People right. come up with these crazy assumptions, and they try to find mathematics and and science. I'm just saying, how do you make a machine to, to look for something that you don't know exists? Well, that is part of the crazy fucking question about CERN. Right. In my opinion, well, I'm going to save it for later. I'm okay. going to save it for later. Because that's a great question. Theoretical physics is just—it's a theory. It's an idea. I have no fucking idea if it's true. I have two more more questions. By the way, one is real quick. I want to because I didn't know how cold space was. Uh, it's negative four hundred and fifty-four degrees Fahrenheit. Space is. Go ahead. Say it again. Four hundred negative four hundred and fifty-four degrees Fahrenheit. Damn. I'm um, obviously we're in the U.S., but really? it's uh it's negative two seventy in Celsius, which is the rest of the world. Wow. Um, two point seven Kelvin. It's nuts. Kelvin's meant to measure so like high intensity. That's how cold they have heat. to keep this thing. Uh, yes, that's how cold this would be. And uh, what is a particle? In particles. We're going to we're going to get into the okay. the subatomic. I want to know what they mean by structures that. Structures of the subatomic particle. We're going to get into that stuff. Right, because a molecule, all molecules are the same. I guess a cell is not all the same. So what kind of cell? You know, if that's what we're talking. Dude, I have no. I'm a writer. Right. I was a writer. I wasn't okay. a scientist. Cool. But we're going to get into right kind of basic physics and things. Nice. Okay, continue. So. Um, Remember, the first detector, the Atlas detector, that's buried way the hell underground because, you know, what if, just in case, hopefully the the 328 feet above this detector will protect humanity and the universe from God knows what. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that looks for the Higgs boson, the God particle, in other words, extra dimensions, dark matter, and black holes. Extra dimensions. Think about that. I mean, mean, what's what's that famous writer who did uh, the Foundation series? Um Asimov, Isaac Asimov. Oh, right, right. As uh, I mean, him and with along with other great writers like Jules Verne, absolutely, have proven a lot of their science correct in their in the near future of their own novels. Yes, and Isaac Asimov, obviously, he's a little farther out, farther out there. Uh, you know, Foundation, especially, or the gods themselves. The gods themselves is amazing because that one's literally another dimension. Guys like this laid the laid the groundwork for right. people that. Investigate this stuff. These particle physicists, these theoretical physicists. Yes. Where do you think they get their ideas from? Yeah, I mean, uh, you look at a movie like Annihilation, um, and uh, it's it's a marvel to see how how can that not exist when it's extremely possible and it's too abstract to think about. Oh, dude, and that just, movie tries its best to explain it, but just wait. Right? I'm just saying. Just it's really wait. cool. It's really cool to think about. This is why I agree. I agree. This is why I wish I was a smarter person. <laughs> You know, so I can understand this kind of thing. I've always loved it. I'm just too stupid to understand it. Right, right. I'm not a Sheldon Cooper. Because this is exactly what he... He is a theoretical physicist. I really hate that you use that reference. Oh, I like the Big Bang. That's my hotel go-to. When I'm in hotels, I always want to... No, that's a good one. When I was uh, after surgery one time, when I got uh, my appendix out, for the first time, I binge-watched the Big Bang Theory. It's good, right? Very easy to watch. Yeah, it's very easy to watch when you're sick. Kaylee Cuco is mm, yummy. Mmm... Oh, she's all right. She looks like a typical white girl. Too. All right, back to the detectors. Okay, yes, yeah, okay. So the second detector is the CMS detector, or just CMS. 
CMS stands for Compact Muon Solenoid. Compact Muon Solenoid. That's my first, my first <laughs> crack at it. What have guessed that? Com- compact Muon Solenoid. Now, the CMS detector searches for the same things as the Atlas detector, mm-hmm. but uses different technical solutions and a different magnet system designed. Mm-hmm. Designed. Namely, CMS is built around a massive superconducting magnet okay. capable of generating a magnetic field of four Tesla about 100,000 times the magnetic field of Earth. This is a fucking massive, just ma- mind-boggling magnet. Yeah, uh, damn. The CMIS, just like the Atlas, is also sitting in a cavern underground and employs the largest scientific collaboration in history, totaling 4,300 particle physicists, engineers, technicians, students, and support staff from 182 institutes in 42 countries. Massive undertaking. Largest undertaking ever. Yeah. Most recently, on March 21st, 2018, so not very long ago, um, an interesting event happened at the CMIS detector. CERN scientists had an accident, and I'm using air quotes, during the Large Hadron, the Large Hadron Collider's warm-up sequence. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people don't realize the Large Hadron Collider is actually put to bed for the winter uh, because of atmospheric and uh, underground temperatures and things. It, it's actually so the weather, uh, the weather's affected on the ground too? It can. Okay. It wow. can. They okay. put this big bastard to sleep for the winter. So yeah. when it was going through its warm-up sequence, okay. somehow, now follow me, Somehow, a rainbow universe and rainbow gravity was created and lasted for just under three seconds. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the mathematics and physicists, physics behind a rainbow universe. Look it up. Have fun. It took me down about an hour rabbit hole. But basically, a rainbow universe, one considered only theoretical at one time, has to do with light particles traveling along different paths through space-time in relation to their energies. And rainbow universes and rainbow gravity, at the end of the day, basically negates the Big Bang Theory. Well, scientists on this day were bewildered at the discovery of this temporary rainbow universe, and while they were analyzing the data, um, an outline of a strange, ghostly, dolphin-like creature appeared on their, compu- on their computer screens for a few seconds. No one knows what it meant. The data was poured over, and the image, as well as the rainbow universe, was deemed real by scientists. Yeah. Did CERN open up a, u- a new universe? And Wait, an uh, unknown creature slipped through into our own? How official is that? It, it's from... It's official. It is official. Yeah, I got a pbs.org site. So the CMS detector, the CMS detector, uh, possibly opened a portal. <laughs> rainbow universe, rainbow gravity, a ghostly outline of a dolphin-like creature was seen on scientists' computer screens. Data analyzed, and it was deemed real. It actually What's happened. rainbow gravity? <laughs> <laughs> I, you gotta look it What's up. What's a it's, color? Yeah, it's it's so deep. It's so deep. So she said. It's so deep. It is. It's. But I guess just understand that you know, rainbow universes, rainbow gravity, the science behind them disproves the Big Bang theory. How does it disprove? So it, according to, but that's like asking. You know, I I, I don't know how. Is to it is it that because question. it's sheer? Okay, well, no, no. It all has to do with the way. It all has to do with the way particles travel along light and the aperture and curvature of the light. And okay, so the idea that big, I, I can't so the big, I can't describe it. People just, say that the Big Bang created the universe, right? So the Big Bang could still happen, that but maybe it just happened to created the universe. Maybe that singularity just created either our reality or maybe more realistically our galaxy or our little space area. All realities, but doesn't mean doesn't mean all. I mean, it could be. I guess the Big Bang doesn't. If it discredits the Big Bang in that way, maybe they're saying it discredits part of it. Like it discredits the fact that the Big Bang created everything. 
it just may, say, it may be just saying, well, knowing this, maybe just created this reality as opposed to all realities. Maybe, right? possibly. Or all parallel universes or whatever. You, you could look up how this rainbow universe, rainbow gravity uh, negates Big Bang. I, I just didn't know how to paraphrase it for a two-hour podcast. It's, it's just so deep. Well, no. you could look up the science yeah. and math behind it. It's out okay. there. Right. But so that's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, the that's third, crazy. the third detector is called Alice. Alice stands for a large ion collider experiment. Alice. Now she too sits in an underground cavern, one hundred eighty-three point seven feet below ground. The Alice detector tries to find quark gluon plasma, a state of matter thought to have formed just after the Big Bang. Hmm. It's all right. Here's where I go back to high school. All ordinary matter in today's universe is made up of atoms. Each atom contains a nucleus composed... (laughs) Am I right, guys? (laughs) Each atom contains a nucleus composed of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of electrons, except for hydrogen. Hydrogen has no neutrons. Protons and neutrons are in turn made of quarks bound together by other particles called gluons. So now we're getting even smaller than protons and neutrons with quarks. With, with quarks. Now I know how the name gluon got in there because glue? Right. It holds them together, right? right? Quarks and gluons seem to be bound together forever inside composite particles, such as protons and neutrons. Right. Now, this is, ins- now, this is an insane thing to think about. Particle collisions within the Large Hadron Collider can generate temperatures more than 100,000 times hotter than the core of our own sun, which allows, in a laboratory setting the near exact conditions of our universe just after the Big Bang. Hmm. This extreme hot condition causes protons and neutrons to melt, thus freeing quarks from their bonds with gluons. This is the quark-gluon plasma Alice searches for. Alice, Alice observes this melting then cooling and expanding of quark-gluon plasma, allowing scientists to understand how this process gave rise to the particles that make up our universe today. Uh, Man, okay. I am am with you barely a little bit, but... Well, we we got more. We got one more. No, I know. I know, but I just want to... Sorry, hold on. Give me a second here. (laughs) There's no way to contest that. I mean, that's the, the science behind... So they're trying Protons, to discover this, neutrons, this, this what, I'm just going to call it gluon short, shorthand. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out uh, how this gluon came to be after the Big Bang. So when they're colliding these things, one of these detectors called Alice mm-hmm. is looking for just this thing after its collision. Meaning that when they're colliding these things, which by the way, it's very cold down there. It's supposed to create the heat that's hotter than our sun. Inside the collider. Upon yep. impact? It creates yes. this heat? Yes. That's insane. Yes. And they can control that in a setting time. where it doesn't melt the world around them? We're going to – I'm going to give you my opinion later. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's awesome. Don't get me wrong. That's awesome. I just wanna, I'm just surprised that no, we can do right. that. No, you're right. That's – you're right. That's a good synopsis of what Alice does. Right. I'm also like, you know, trying to dumb it down, make sure the audiences are staying with us. Understood. Not dumb it down, but I'm just figuring it out as I go and making it sound as simple as I can by no, asking. Good, okay, good. Cool. All right. Continue. So the fourth detector is the LHCB, the Large Hadron Collider Beauty. Beauty, okay. Now, LHCB also sits in a cavern 328 feet below ground. These scientists knew, bury this shit. Don't put it up on the surface over by Geneva. Mm -hmm. Put this underground just in case. Yeah, let them have their convention. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Now, LHCB sets out to understand why we live in a universe comprised almost entirely of matter but no antimatter. It tries to understand the difference between matter and antimatter by studying a, a type of particle called the beauty quark, or the B quark. In other words, LHCB sets out to understand what happened immediately after the Big Bang. We're talking one second after, which allowed matter to survive the Big Bang 
and build the universe we inhabit today. But it's also part of uh – this is all theoretical because no one was there during the Big Bang. But like upon the Big Bang, scientists have said, from what I know, what little I know, is that matter as well as antimatter were in equal parts dispersed from that Big Bang. Yeah, right? And they actually say – And a lot of people are looking for where is that antimatter? Right. You're right. Where did the dark matter go? Another well, way – Dark matter, antimatter Dark matter is the different, different things. Sorry. They're, they are two different Anti things. So I'm going to say antimatter. Um like, where did it go? It had to go somewhere. Right. The fact that we can't find it anywhere is suspicious. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they're looking. And okay. They, they found it. Okay, they found it. Okay. They did. So I went uh, real quick before yeah. we started this. I didn't have a chance because I found too much information. There's this uh, video podcast series about CERN itself. What? And the last three or four podcast episodes are all on on, on on dark matter and antimatter. Are you serious? Yeah, the last most updated stuff. Oh, you get what's the name of it? Uh, it's, I just typed CERN in my search window. Well, Jesus, the you said fuck CERN. Was that dude? You said CERN <laughs> and Siri popped on and said, "I thought so." Siri, you know, come on, man. You know, <laughs> you freaked me out. Siri, man. come on, Lexi. What do you we think talked of that? about this. I think that's creepy. You AI said, knows, man. You said that, and she said, "I thought so." Yeah, I oh bet you did. God. I bet All you right. did. All right, moving bitch. on, right? I'm, I'm telling you, NSA is listening to us right now. And uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so I, there's a certain podcast. That's cool. I'm yeah, there's video check it out. Ed- educational podcasts. Some of it are more scientifically geared. Some of them are more educationally geared. Um, I saw a lot of options. I did not have a chance to. Even, I didn't even know where to start. Yeah. So I didn't really get to do it. Yeah, that's it. There's, I mean, there's so much. Yeah, there's an infinite amount of information out there about CERN, yeah. and any direction you want to take with CERN, yes. whether it's scientific, whether it's conspiratorial, whether it's doomsday. I mean, it's all. By the it's, way, it's just how can it be a conspiracy? Well, no one. They seem to not be hiding anything. What the science? What, what the scientists are trying to do? <laughs> it's like what day the after they find the rainbow thing. Let's like, tell what the is people. Alice really trying to do? What right. is Atlas? really trying to do what is it really done? what more do you people want it's looking yeah. for antimatter and other, other dimensions what uh, what else could they be hiding mm-hmm. they're looking how to well let's find out let's, uh, okay <laughs> go ahead <laughs> now so those are the four detectors yeah. looking for some really cool really sci-fi type shit uh what i thought was really fun is there's a live feed available to the public Ooh. so we could watch the real-time data from the large hadron collider and other experiments at cern that's cool yeah, including their detectors? It's, it's really cool. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, but it's still cool. Including their detectors? They, they, whatever the Some of them. Some, some of them. them. Yeah, I've only just started to get into this website. But uh, you know, maybe we have some particle physicists among our listeners. Oh, yeah. So I'll oh, leave, uh, oh, yeah. They, they <laughs> love listening to, to ghost stuff. <laughs> so they I'll love leave. non-reality-based things. <laughs> Listen, you know, for my particle physicists out there, I'll leave the link to this live feed in the have show you notes. you met a mathematician or scientist? I'm sorry, you guys, but you guys are not very into anything you can't explain. That's what they are all into, essentially. A lot of them are pretty... Hmm. They, they hard nose. Yeah, they're hard nose. Yeah. Um, so, of course, there are many, many, many more machines and experiments happening at CERN, like the proton synchrotron and the super proton synchrotron. Yeah, when Megatron fought him, was and really awesome. The, and the anti proton decelerator used to slow down anti protons so scientists can investigate antimatter. More on the search for antimatter shortly. It should be called the redundant machine. You just had two antis in a row. Like, I don't know what the hell is going on. And CERN is not the only location of such technology and experiments. There are accelerators here in Illinois, at Argonne National Laboratory, and at Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. They're found in Michigan, Indiana, California, Virginia, New York, just to name a few. All these states have technology in one form or another, just like CERN does, just on a smaller scale. And that's not to mention the countless ones scattered across Europe, South America, Asia, Africa, and Australia. Who knows what the repercussions really are, have been, or will be with all of this super technology firing up and smashing particles all over the globe. So uh, we're saying that uh, these other places, including ones in Illinois, have accelerators and decelerators. Yep, just and on they a smaller have, scale. They, Absolutely. So, like by not by miles, but like 
thousands of feet instead. Is that, is that the thing? Is that the no, idea? It would still be miles because remember they need this, this they need, they space need to, to really crank to rank up. it up. Right They're up. just not as big as CERN. Same technology. Are they same things? Are they? Do they coordinate? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I didn't look that up. You mean like, hey, hey, uh, Geneva, it's Illinois. We're going to crash a particle today. Yeah, that like maybe they do it at the same time. All these labs. I'm sure they they uh, replicate or experiments. don't do it at the same time. Maybe that's what their worry is. Like, make sure you don't do it on this day. We're going to do something. Okay? <laughs> Could be. Could be the opposite. I'm just yeah. asking because I'm no, it's a question. great question. Um, I'm sure they replicate uh, experiments across different locations so they could gauge the results. Yeah. Hey, you got the same result I did. Whoa, that's fucked up. Wonder, or maybe they're telling it, hey man, we're going to fire up a large okay. hadron today. Right. Don't fire yours up because we're going to rip a, a, a hole in time. Right. You know what, what, I mean? about, what about what about the? Oh my God. Okay. What about the, the the what is the point of putting CERN the CERN menu uh, the the main big one in where it is now by Geneva? Like, is it because uh, way less likely for earthquakes, right? You know, is it because it's not on a plate, right? Things like that. Or is it because it's, uh, I don't know where it's on the equator, but is it, could it be that something relating to the, the axis and the magnetic fields of shifting uh, seasons throughout the year? Like, what? That's a great question. I don't know the answer, but I wonder if it has something to do with how autonomous that particular part of the world allows CERN to be. Mm. Like if CERN tried to construct and conduct the experiments that they do here in the States, mm -hmm. would they be too heavily regulated? And maybe where they're at, kind of lets them do their own thing because CERN does kind of do its own thing. It kind of regulates itself. Well, let me tell you what works. Would that be allowed well, What never works is science, and that's politics. Right. Yeah. And red tape. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, people regret doing anything because of that. You know, Oppenheimer, Einstein. And <laughs> there you go. So I'll bet um, you that had something to do with it. Okay. Um, I'm just curious as a matter because of fact, I did read that CERN does a lot of its own self-governance. Because how do you know? Like everything's on an axis; it tilts. I mean, there are different things on purpose. I mean, what the the, the time that I mean, every what the closest the moon will ever be to our thing, the closest Mars will ever be to our thing, alignment to the magnetic whatever structure. Like, I'm not saying it has to be involved with the stars, but if we're talking about star work here on on Earth, um, how do those things not apply? How do they not know it applies? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do, do they only do it on days that are astronomically, um, like astronomical holidays? Is that when they do it, when something big happens then? Um, cool. Or do they avoid it for those reasons? And if so, why? Um, just adding different questions that we really shouldn't be adding because I don't know how to answer them. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can't answer it. Right. But that's one of the mis that's great thing about CERN is it's so mysterious to the layperson, you know, to people like you and me. There's millions of questions we have. Oh, I'm a layperson. And right. we're just never going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for this episode, I really wanted to focus on CERN as a whole. So, yeah, all these technologies located over the globe. I thought it was an oval, not a whole. Huh? <laughs> Nothing all this technology is lurk located all over the globe, uh, including here in Illinois. But for this episode, I wanted to focus on CERN, mm -hmm. and specifically the Large Hadron Collider. Because many, many lay people, scientists, and physicists claim that the experiments being conducted at CERN in Geneva uh, could, A, bring about the end of the world, mm -hmm. B, could or has introduced hellish, hellish dimensional beings into our world, mm -hmm. C, be the source of the Mandela effect and time slips, mm -hmm. and D, all the above. Okay, here's my question. Before we get into those, what is the one that you most likely think if it has to be one of those options? Mandela effect and time Mandela slips. Effect. Okay. Absolutely. Lexi? Mandela effect. That's the one you most likely think? Yeah. What about you? <sighs> I mean, now, we, I just told the story. It was documented that this dolphin-like creature image came out of Seamus. Now, do they have videos? They took a video. With Is the, that what they saw? It, it was an image that flashed on multiple scientists' computer screens while they were analyzing the data of this rainbow universe and rainbow gravity. Okay, I was curious about that. I never asked about cameras or hearing equipment down there, which I don't think will survive such heat Th and this cold. This is the story. This is the story. Right, right, right. right, right. 
So, is that a hellish dimensional being being unleashed into our world? I mean, for all we know, the reason we love rainbows and unicorns is because so we won't be afraid of them when they conquer over. We don't know shit. <laughs> the fuck do we know? Did you see that Simpsons episode where the dolphins rose up? Yeah, yeah, conquered yeah. Conquered humanity? Yeah, yeah. That's what I first thought. So, what is it for you? Is I was it, thinking Hellboy. A, bring about the end of the world. B, could yeah. or has introduced hellish dimensional beings into our world. C, be the source of the Mandela effect. Or D, I'm sorry. Above. It's all of the above for me. Damn. All right. Well, let's see where this goes. All right. So let's talk about some conspiracy theory. God, I don't even know where to begin. All right. <clears throat> the Higgs boson, the God particle, which physicists at CERN did discover. They, the, the God particle has been found. They discovered it in 2012. Where was it? Like in someone's cabinet? <laughs> it was in his shoe. <laughs> It was in his left shoe. It's like a pebble. I'm like crazy. from the sand. Like you never get to all the sand what out. What is this down here? Yeah. Now, okay. The Higgs boson is a particle that proves that the Higgs field exists. Now, you got to follow me here, okay? Well, Listeners. I'm trying. you got to follow. The Higgs boson is a particle that proves that the Higgs field exists. A hypothetical invisible force field that is present throughout the universe. It can't be seen. Uh-huh. It can't be touched. It can't be smelled, but without the Higgs field, we couldn't exist. Nothing could at all. The Higgs field gives mass to elementary particles, particles that have no structure and cannot be divided, yet are the basic building blocks of the universe. So the Higgs field is a sphere surrounding our entire universe that makes the fact that we have mass and anything. mass to matter. Right, mass to matter, right? It makes matter matter. It was a theory that this field must exist in order for the God particle to do its work. Yes. Okay. Essentially, yes. That's now, most people think that atoms make up the universe, but actually... Eves do. Atoms Again, sorry. are made of smaller components, like protons, neutrons, and electrons. Mm-hmm. While electrons are considered elementary particles, protons and neutrons aren't. Protons and neutrons are made up of even smaller elementary particles, like I said before, called <laughs> quarks. Right. So quarks make protons and neutrons, and protons, neutrons, and electrons make atoms, which make up the universe. And we really don't know how far this Russian doll-like model goes. You know, the one that one that fits into the other, fits into the other, fits into the other. Right? So our instruments haven't, ab- haven't been able to, you know... Let me either separate more or look even closer. I don't we don't have know. anything to look at a millionth. Let's of see what a, happens. Right. Now, our current understanding of how everything fits together is called the standard model. In the standard model, there are two primary particles the fermions, which make up matter, think mass, and the eloys. And, yeah, and the bosons, which create forces. Scientists have been able to measure the mass of a particle for quite a while, but they never really knew where the particle's mass came from or why particles have the mass that they do. Now, here's the important part. When a particle passes through the Higgs field, it interacts and gathers mass. The more interaction, the more mass is gathered. If there was no Higgs field, there wouldn't be anything. No stars, no moon, no earth, no podcast microphone, no Dave Black, stupid Higgs field. <laughs> so how does the Higgs boson fit in all of this? They have imagine, to recreate a field. Right. So imagine, imagine you have a ping pong ball floating in a glass of water. Mm-hmm. This is my own, this is how I kind of put it together. Imagine you have a ping pong ball floating in a glass of water. The ping pong ball is a particle floating through the Higgs field, which is the water. The water gives the ping pong ball its mass. Now it takes a disruption, a stimulus, an excitation of the Higgs field to produce a Higgs boson. If you, do, if you introduce energy to our glass of water, say by dropping a rock into it from a few feet above, the resulting splash itself is the Higgs boson. This is what quantum mechanics teaches, that all particles are excitations of fields. The Higgs boson is an excitation of the Higgs field. By finding the Higgs boson, or the God God particle, scientists now know that the Higgs field exists. Now here's the tricky part, and where the thought that 
concern will end life as we know it comes in. The boson is unstable and only exists for a short period of time before it breaks down or decays into more stable particles. It's this instability of the Higgs boson, the guard particle, which prompted Stephen Hawking, the eminent physicist who just passed away, to declare that the God particle, Higgs boson, found by CERN, could destroy the universe. The Higgs boson could become unstable at a very high energy level and have the potential to trigger a catastrophic vacuum decay which would cause space and time to collapse and we wouldn't have any warning to the dangers, Hawking said. Okay. Yes. Now it gets even deeper. The famed astrophysicist, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he was quoted as saying that the search for the God particle could literally cause the planet to explode. And in 2008, when the Large Hadron Collider was starting up for the first time, a German professor named Otto Rossler filed a lawsuit against CERN on the grounds that the facility could trigger a mini black hole that could get out of control and annihilate the planet. So if Hawking, DeGrasse Tyson, and this German professor can be believed, it seems that folks at CERN are being awfully cavalier with their experiments and how they could affect not only humanity, but the universe, too. I'll take it so far as to ask this terrifying question. What if some rogue government, a doomsday cult, or a terrorist organization took control of this technology and tried to use it for their own twisted purposes? How the fuck are they going to use it? To end the world. No, how? (laughs) Have you read stereo instructions? Well, I'll leave it this section with one final thought on discovery of the pot... uh, on the discovery of the God particle. Remember, I said it was found in 2012. Mm -hmm. Here's where conspiracy kicks in. The year the God particle was discovered, 2012, just happens to be the same year of the Mayan calendar end date, which was supposed to be the end of the world. And that John Cusack great movie 2012 came out. Or is that weird? Yeah. You with me? What do you think? Um, I'm not with you. I don't believe that, but okay. No, but it's odd. No, it's they odd. They discover this particle that has a potential, according to Stephen Hawking, DeGrasse Tyson, this German professor. It's also weird that Stephen Hawking died on, the, on Einstein's snap. birthday. In a snap. It's it could end weird, in a snap. Too. That yeah. particle was found the same year the Mayan calendar ended, which was supposed to be the end of our time. It's also weird that it sounds like the splitting of the atom. It's crazy, right? It sounds like that. Remember the splitting of the atom? It is a small thing to however they do it. I'm just going to say splits because I assume that's what they do. Uh, splitting it in a chain reaction like that, you know, in that container, will create nuclear explosions, right? That's what they discovered. That's what they used it for, Hiroshima, so on and so on. And then we, have, yes. we added hydrogen to it, which makes it worse, right? Ten times worse or whatever. The point is that we have this small thing that we took and we exploited, and out in the Nevada desert, we tested on, right? We drove past the Nevada test range. Yes. Yes, we did. Um it's very easy to say that these people are doing the same thing with a much, 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 much bigger ball of wax. And by bigger, I mean smaller because it seems to be like the smaller you go, the worse it is. Huh, and yeah. that's the God particle, um, which is, again, that's something that they discover in the infinitesimal seconds after its collision with another particle, right? That's what, that's what this yeah, – yeah. that's how we're discovering this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, have they? Has anyone said anything about creating this field before, or are we using the field we're in now to create it again? What do you mean? The field like, we're in because now. the idea is that uh, this Higgs field, Higgs, yes, Higgs, um, this Higgs was saying that the God particle and every other atom and carbon and everything cannot exist without this field. Correct. Now we're not creating a field no, to the put field, this. Hot, the field's thing. already been there. Right, because we're in it. <laughs> field, we're there, in it right now. Here. P- particles are passing through the field, gaining mass, creating things. Everything. Well, no, the, the field is, is what we're in now. This room is in that field, yes. right? That's what we're saying, right? We're not, According to this, They're yes. not creating another one to encase no. it into this. No, they... I don't know how they would. I'm just saying they're not. By, by getting the Higgs boson, proved that the Higgs field is everywhere, including, so in the, the way I take it, including inside the in, Hadron Collider. In the biggest doomsday scenario, then, if we want with option A about these four conspiracies, which one, which is more possible, the end of the world, I'm talking about just that one now. Okay. Um, in this particular case, could you say that because 
that we don't can't create a field, and why would you? Because we're in that field already. The whole universe is creating the God particle again, finding it again, discovering it again, proving it again from that first time billions of years ago. Um, could that be like choose a crowd kind of thing? Like you can have two <laughs> in the same space in the same field at the same time? Don't know. I mean, scientifically speaking, can't they theorize that mathematically speaking, like the same way Einstein figured out or Stephen Hawking figure out how black holes work without ever been to one? Like, can't they figure out that if if that is going to be a problem that they wouldn't do it in the beginning? Well, I think that goes to fuel a lot of this conspiracy theory. Right. That's what I'm saying. That, if, but if so that's not the case and they're still trying, it makes me seem like maybe the risk – a small, maybe it's a one percent risk as opposed to fifty percent or hundred yeah. percent to these other people who are more scared about it. Yeah, maybe they just see it as a one two percent risk. I mean, I still don't think we should rest the entire universe <laughs> exactly. for it. But uh, yeah, and that's the thing. According to these, but I'm already into it. Preeminent, I mean, dominant physicists and astrophysicists, th- that has the chance of happening. Right, and not only to our universe, every single conceivable universe out there. That these experiments that they're doing, if gone rogue, if um, the outcome wasn't what they expected, could erase all that in a blink. Oh, you're talking about you talking about other whether realities, it's, whether it's parallel, it's, whatever. Yes, everything. Dimensions, time itself, dimensions, huh. everything gone. I don't know. That's what they say. Well, I don't know about that. And these are people with degrees ten times mine, <laughs> ten times you know our have, education I don't have degrees. I mean, I have one. It's crazy to think about, man. Now, uh, Stephen Hawking did say the chances are, you know, one in Google trillion, right? But oh, it, wow. But the, the possibility is there. Oh, oh my. He, he, he's not even saying 1%. It's like a fraction of 1%. But, gotcha. the, but it is there. That's worth it. And actually, this guy, this... Um, I started won the lottery. This one who, uh, the, the, scientist, the, the professor who brought against the lawsuit yeah. against CERN, he did it on behalf of humanity. Well, yeah, that's clear. On behalf, not on behalf of himself, on behalf of humanity. Yeah, I mean, this is it's pretty interesting. It's like, you know, he's John McClain, and the CERN is the Nakatomi building. I get it. <laughs> <Nakatomi>. Oh God. <laughs> so uh, one of the one of the things they were trying to do, okay, like I just explained, was yes. search for the Higgs boson, the God the God particle. Mm-hmm. Some even go so far to say that the Large Hadron Collider wasn't designed to find the God particle, but instead it was built to summon an actual. God. Mathematical mm-hmm. physicist Professor Uriana Arfiva, I'm trying to get these names. Prof- mathematical physicist Professor Uriana Arfiva and Doctor Igor Volovich. Okay, these these are character names. And these are mathematical physicists, so these aren't bums <laughs> off the street. They argued that when the Large Hadron Collider focuses its energy into a subatomic particle. The particle would distort the fabric of the universe, the space-time, possibly so much so that it could create a wormhole, a shortcut in time that will reduce the time it takes to travel between two points. Yes. Two points that could be in two completely separate universes. They're talking about the possibility of time travel. Wait, wait, wait. How can it... Mm. I don't know that. I don't know the mathematics. I can't help you with the like, math. I'm not like a physicist. It's like in the question, you're just like rolling over saying two universes. That's, that's what they're Universe trying to prove. Universe is unique. I told you, the Atlas, the Atlas um, uh, what, what's it, what I call them, not the observers, the Atlas uh, detector find is trying number. to find alternate universes. <laughs> they're searching for alternate universes. This no, is I get thing it. An alternate do. universe is not another universe. Like, they, well, I mean, I guess you're right, but I mean, like, not like, it's like, our universe is, um, what do people call it when they understudy? It's like the universe is understudy. <laughs> the Milky Way isn't the only universe out there. Science has been saying that for. No, that's galaxy. Galaxy, right. That's the big difference. Y- you're right. Are we saying galaxy or universe? Wrong. No, universe. <laughs> universe. <laughs> okay, they're talking universe about wormholes. is the whole enchilada. They're talking about wormholes that could take you between two points quickly. Yeah, but within in our universe. Un- nope. What? <laughs> there are other universes. <laughs> They're trying to prove the existence of other. So you're talking universes. about parallel universes, whatever you want to call them. No, but that's, that's different. Alternate, if, parallel. If if it universe, doesn't make a difference that point. If the universe is the whole enchilada, so to speak, right? You're saying there's a neighbor, there's yes. a whole other amount of space yes. holding a whole different universe. Yes. yes. Then that's all part of the universe. But it's alternate universes. It's not ours. It's another. How do we know? 
I don't know. Does that mean? Does that mean that, that they me have questions <laughs> that I don't have? And these are rhetorical questions uh, designed for a physicist. Does that mean that and, that other universe has their own Higgs field that they're using? A different Higgs field? Is that what you're telling an me? An anti Higgs field? Sure, it could be. What, what if we're the anti to them? We probably are. I mean, okay, <laughs> that's probably true. It's like you're just fucking, you know. Nicely blowing my mind here. <laughs> I know, dude. It's, no, no, no. It's a lot. Okay, I understand other dimensions. I understand realities. I understand the parallel universe. I, I don't understand them, but I can understand them in a way where, theoretically speaking, they're not us, but they're a different version of us. But okay. they can. Ex- but I can see us like existing in the same space without actually being in the same space. And warmost, from what I've ever known or understood, right. is that unless they travel dimensions. They really travel within the same gigantic universal space from one point to another. Right. Now, doesn't mean they skip other universes in or general. Or do they? Who knows? I it's don't... like saying like the Chicago L train will take you from Grand Station, you know, or whatever, to Switzerland. Well, that's as unrealistic as that. <laughs> Well, these these scientists are talking about okay. the possibility of time travel. I'm Warm buying holes. it so far. Wormholes. Oh, I'm with you so far. <laughs> now, conspiracy theorists claim that the real purpose of the Large Hadron Collider was to create a wormhole underground mm-hmm. through which God could travel to our universe. But not just any God. Shiva, the destroyer. In Hinduism, Shiva is the great destroyer whose role is to bring the universe to an end, to obliterate all existence and birth it anew. Doesn't uh, sound like the bad guys. Give, 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 you know give her a shot, okay? It's a he, actually. Oh, really? Shiva is a he. Hmm. But you, you know what? Fix on PR, then. And this just drives more conspiracy theory. At CERN's headquarters, on their own property, in their courtyard, stands a huge statue of Shiva in his uh, Nataraja form, or the Lord of the Dance form. Mm-hmm. Now, Shiva's Nataraja form is not evil in any way, but that means nothing to the conspiracy theorists that claim the statue is yet another sign that CERN is up to more than just trying to understand particle physics. No, no, no. It's the same thing like when you're in a major hospital yeah. and they have uh, a chapel. They have different things to accommodate many religions. Do they have a chapel of destruction? No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying that's what Shiva is. Hin- but that's, that's Hinduism. So why does CERN? That's millions of people. What a billion have people! A Hindu god of destruction. Because they have their fucking property. Hindu scientists there who probably study and go with. It doesn't mean that it has to be that. There's not a statue of Jesus. You don't know that. I do. And they probably don't. <laughs> How do you know? There's not a statue of the Virgin. Because I researched this. Because maybe they're just fucking. Forever. They're just highlighting the one thing that's the destroyer of worlds. Of course, they might highlight that the statue. Of and also, Shiva that doesn't is mean there. it's a bad thing. And the name CERN itself, it could be seen as a play on the word Kernanos. Spelled C E R N U N N O S, U N N O S. The Celtic god, Celtic. Uh, the yeah, the Oscar edited that out. No, the Celtic horn god of the underworld. And if you don't believe in Shiva or Kanonos, instead look at it as an omnipotent uh, Abrahamic god, like the god taught about in churches, synagogues, and mosques around the world. Could it be that those gods or that god? created our universe while doing and observing the creation process from somewhere else, from a multiverse, and the ability to view and create was given complements of a wormhole. <clears throat> Could CERN be trying to reproduce this exact state only with the view and the manipulative capabilities going the opposite way? And to add fuel to this crazy theory... Sergio Bertolucci, former director of research and scientific computing for CERN, said himself that a super collider could open otherworldly doors to other dimensions for a, quote, very tiny lapse of time, mere fractions of a second. However, that may just be enough time to peer into this open door, either by getting something out of it or sending something into it, end quote. And to just give and stick the proverbial knife in and give it a twist one final time? Newspapers all over Europe reported that on June 17, 2016, huge, dark, ominous clouds formed directly over the area under which the Large Hadron Collider sits, proving that CERN was successful at opening some sort of a portal. 
The massive clouds apparently formed on the same day CERN began it, its AWAKE project, the proton-driven plasma wake field acceleration experiment, which allow uh, future colliders to achieve higher energies over shorter distances than is possible today. So we'll make it an even more powerful Hadron Collider. Were the clouds a harbinger of something evil entering our realm through a man-made world wormhole? That was hard to say. <laughs> Were the clouds a harbinger of something evil entering our realm How many through trucks, a man-made wormhole? How many trucks can a woodchuck truck up? Uh... Could it be the devil or the Antichrist <laughs> like some believe? It probably wasn't. The clouds were most likely captured during a well-tracked superstorm in Geneva by nature ph photographer Christopher Suarez, and they were appropriated. The photos were appropriated by certain conspiracy theorists without his permission. This is fact, but who knows? Your face is fact. Let me tell you something. Two things. One, uh, folks, uh, rewind two minutes. You can get that again because he just went through a whole lot of there. Just listen to it again. I wish I could rewind. Um, two... <laughs> Uh, Bertolucci with Alfredo sauce, very good. <laughs> Thank you for, so for, for that. Um, which brings us to CERN's own logo. Listeners, look this up. Google CERN logo. CERN's logo appears to have three overlapping and slightly off-center sixes, what looks suspiciously like 666, the mark of the beast. I saw a video on YouTube quickly deconstruct the CERN logo, and three perfect sixes fall right out of it. Of course, this drives the conspiracy theorists wild. But according to CERN, the logo isn't three sixes, designed to look like the mark of the beast, but instead, their logo is derived from the outline of a schematic of a synchrotron, a football field-sized cyclic particle cyclic particle yeah, it looks accelerator. Like a, it looks like a 3D drawing. With sixes, right? Yeah. With a line added here. So let me do that again. Oscar cut me off. Their logo is, de job. is derived from one of the outlines of a schematic of a synchrotron, a football field-sized cyclic particle accelerator, only with a line added here, a line removed there, a circle added for good measure, and made to look slightly off-center. Nothing nefarious about it. But wouldn't you think the smartest people in the world would have realized what their logo looks like and just come up with something different from the get-go to quell any sort of rumors or speculations? From the get-go? Because that's a fucking 666 if I ever seen one. Okay, so, okay, are we still, are we still, we're still on the second of the four conspiracies, right? Um, yeah, but you're kind of going through it, yeah. I was, well, um, do you have any more on that? Well, I mean, if you're going on the 666 thing, if you're yeah. going on the satanic theme, there's a video on YouTube called, and you could look this up, Human Sacrifice Ritual at CERN. Hmm. Human Sacrifice Ritual at CERN. I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, where you see hooded figures performing a mock human sacrifice at the foot of CERN statue of Shiva, the one I just mentioned. The film shot through a window by a seemingly unobserved cameraman. Uh, CERN caught wind of this and and claimed it was just some workers having fun with conspiracy theorists. Yeah. And that an investigation will be conducted and offending parties punished. Of course, this admission by CERN did nothing to stop those conspiracy theorists from running rampant, saying the video proves that CERN is out to summon the devil or the Antichrist via its complex experiments. Okay. Devil's advocate aside, what do you think? <laughs> I think the vi I, the video's got to be fake. It's got to be fake. Oh, you mean fake as in a, a prank, you mean? It, yeah, it's got to be a prank. It's no, I mean, this, I mean this, the whole thing. The Shiva 666, the design of the logo, yourself, what do you think? So Shiva is there. And no, he, I mean, as a, he is known as the god of destruction, destroy all, rebirth it. But much like reading, getting a tarot card of death, it just means change and reborn. It doesn't have to mean death right. and badness. But right, when so. considering the... The, the cavalier attitude I think certain scientists and physicists have with the experiments they're conducting, they don't know what the result is going to be. They try to protect humanity in the universe by burying it 500 feet underground, but they don't know what's really going to happen. It sounds like so, the beginnings of a Dan Brown novel. Well, antimatter, right? Angels and demons, the antimatter bomb, that's where they got it from. Certainly. No, I know. I, I read the same book, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Are they Satanists? No. Are they trying to look for alternate universes? Absolutely. But are they, are trying, they trying to create wormholes? Absolutely. But are they saying? Are you, but do you believe they're trying to resurrect Shiva or God? What's, what kind of leap is that? 
let's first find the door before we know what to get through that door, right? Like, I, think I, they are the for, I think they are looking for doors. Right. Absolutely. But, but not specifically something know, like this is what you're saying. That's what I'm asking you. Do they, do, do they intentionally want to bring around death and destruction? Probably not. But they, no, but a God. And God I in think, general. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think they could be searching for a creator. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, or maybe they're trying to be creators inside another universe. I mean, I feel like scientists like this gods. who are looking for something that they themselves call – well, not they themselves. I'm sure it's a famous term – God particle. They're looking for this God particle, right? And they're finding this old stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the idea of the God particle, that to me, it means they're taking religion out of it. There is, they're saying that the closest thing that they can imagine to a God is to find the first thing that created all of us. It doesn't mean that doing that will make this God who comes out and tells them things and shit or does something. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is to create a small thing that started the whole shebang, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, you, you know, you want to know what I think? Yeah. I think it's, it's today's Tower of Babel. They are trying to build a tower to reach God, the Creator, whatever that is. Okay, it's just doing Just like the Tower of Babel way. fell, CERN may be headed for... for bad things but it felt because Catas catastrophe by some fluke of an experiment i think they are trying to reach something else whatever that something else is i don't know i think it's a modern tower of babel that's what i think so you don't think stone is a good idea <sighs> because then if i say that it's it's saying that science and and progression isn't a good idea um no well yeah kind of I mean, not necessarily. No, I think that's exactly what it says. If, no, I, say, I, mean, if I say CERN, I'm against CERN. CERN is the CERN, biggest against... testament for discovery through science. Yes, but, then I'm against but it's not that the only scientific... source of discovery for science. On this level, it is. Only on the level that they're asking questions they don't know how the answers. Like, they don't even know how to ask the questions. Yeah, but it's to. all science, right? No, I mean, all science at some point was like that. But not all science in the world created is through CERN. No, of course so, not. So uh, doesn't mean so exactly. It doesn't mean that you're saying that. It just means that the the front runner for unexplained science, you're you're hesitating to say that you don't like, right? Yeah, I guess. But I, mean, not, I, I don't, like, don't want to paint you the picture. I don't, I don't want people like to the, think that you are not scientific, right? Or, or that you're not into in, it, in right? Progression, or right? Believe right. in science. Or, I know you do, and I think if anyone's listened to f sixty whatever four, probably, sixty four, yeah. whatever the fuck, um, damn. Uh, yes, if you listen to this many shows that he wouldn't like, obviously you're inside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just think the, the potential outcomes is pretty scary stuff. Cause you know, yeah. Cause you're afraid of demons and aliens. I'm afraid of demons and time space just collapsing. Have you seen time crimes? <laughs> you know, in an instant. Uh, okay. But I also feel like anthropologically speaking, I think I said that wrong. Um, apologies. Is that um, the idea that we would – the idea that anything remotely what we grew up through folklore and written word from the old and old and olden days that were the, all these religions, religions come from or beliefs or Korans or whatever, um, the idea that it will have anything to do with what we're finding out here. Are going to be the same. It's so. It's it's even less likely than the zero point one one zero 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 one percent chance of the whole universe blowing off from this. Like I feel like you don't know what's going to be, and it's like it's like okay. Let's say maybe we find this God thing and someone goes through. Maybe they get through with it. Maybe and after all those maybes, they would still have to decide to destroy us. Like it seems like, right? I mean, I don't, decision or. Uh, unintended consequence. Right. Unintended, right? Well, whatever. Decide not intended. But we're saying if they discover, if this conspiracy theory goes to light as it does, it has to go through so many insane, impossibly hurdles of improbability in order to get there. So, okay, which makes me feel more at ease. But every day, CERN is uh, experiencing those insane. <laughs> So let's fuck as much Theoretical. as we can before that happens, I mean, guys. Every day, that's what they're doing. All these insane theories and impossibilities, they're accomplishing, you know? That's I crazy. Mean, to an extent, they are, but it's like they're accomplishing 
It's like a, a, a baby trying to find out how to properly hold something. It'll take months and years to decide what it is for. Like, that's how slow we're going. Yeah. I don't even think it'll be a lifetime. It would be fun if we found that out in our lifetimes. But, you know, obviously, baby steps. We're taking the babies of baby steps every time. Every time we discover something new, it's like we're discovering something new to maybe be able to detect it better next time. Like, it's not even like we're doing leaps and bounds here. We're just discovering ideas and theories and what have you. But yeah, it could be bad, but it's just the chances of that are extremely less likely. Hopefully. I'm trying to alleviate your concerns and maybe some other concerns out there. Sure. But um, yeah, that's why I'm not worried. That's my point. Well, no, that's good. And we're that's talking about good. the second of the theories, and I think this one might be the least likeliest of them all three. Okay. Um, demons and shit. I mean, Hellboy. I love Hellboy. That's what they <laughs> did, essentially. Well, going on the demons and devil thing that we were yeah. just talking about, uh, observers at CERN claim to have seen dark, shadowy figures in the accelerator tunnels themselves. CERN scientists claim to see ghostly, ghostly faces on their computer screens mm-hmm. right before their screens mysteriously shut down. Now, there are cons- countless videos on YouTube uh, claiming to show spirit faces in videos of particles exploding from these detector areas. I think it's the same thing in the fires of fire. Countless. You could look them up. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. Well, you're right. There's simulacra, finding distinct patterns and random shapes. And also, if you tend to have a fear for something, you tend to be on the look for it more. Right. Yeah. Like, if you have a fear for something specific, bugs or whatever, you're going to notice more bugs than the average guy. That's right. doesn't mean Spiders that they're there case, to kill you, case. or it doesn't mean that they're there to be in your way, you know? Then there's the, the location of CERN itself, the location itself, where CERN sits, mm-hmm. uh, that people cry conspiracy about. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the CERN laboratory sits astride the Franco-Swiss border near Geneva, Switzerland, right? Mm-hmm. Many conspiracy theorists cannot help but notice that a town in France where CERN is partially situated is, situated is called, and I'm going to get this wrong, saint genus Poily. saint genus Poily. The name Poily comes from the Latin Apoliacum, and in Roman times... A temple existed on this same spot in honor of Apollo, and that people who lived and worshipped there believed that this area was a gateway to the underworld. CERN is built on the exact same spot. Religious leaders drew a connection to a verse straight out of Revelation, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, and verse 11, which makes reference to the name Apollon. And the quote from Revelation goes, To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a kind over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollon. Creepy ass shit. Hmm. And they're saying that this spot supposedly has that Revelation is talking about and the other fact that you said that I already forgot the details of because you're saying so much shit. Ex- um, you're right. Uh, I'm sorry. This is where the Temple of Apollo was, where people believe This is worse than the last show uh, with all the, all the fucking countries in, Th- in Thailand, whatever the fuck yes, we were talking about. Yes. Um, and it ties to Revelation. It's mm-hmm. creepy stuff. Creepy uh, stuff. I like that. But, you know, I mean, the oldest, uh, other than China and Africa... I mean, Europe is a very old, historically oh, yeah. ridden place. So oh, you, yeah. We talk about here, and we wish we knew as much as they do about their own history. We have, what, <laughs> hundreds yeah. of years? They have, like, thousands. So we got the experiments going on there. We got the name. We got the logo. We got the location. Mm-hmm. All driving conspiracy theories crazy. Now, the search for mm-hmm. antimatter using the anti-proton decelerator. Mm-hmm. There's a theory originated by a British physicist and Nobel Prize winner, Paul Dirac, that says, for every particle that exists, there also exists a corresponding antiparticle. Right. I like this one. Yes. Matching the original particle in every way, except that the antiparticle holds an opposite charge. For example, electrons always carry a negative charge. But in Dirac's theory, there should also exist electrons with a positive charge. So you're saying there is no no electrons that carry a positive charge in this reality, meaning in regular matter. Right, right. This theory opened up the possibility of entire galaxies and universes, Oscar, Go fuck yourself. made of antimatter. Okay. Problem is, when matter and antimatter come into contact, 
they annihilate each other in a flash of energy, okay. make it impossible for scientists to study antimatter. Now, the Big Bang should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter, but science says that there is far more matter in the universe than there is antimatter. Well, yeah. So where did all the antimatter go? Well, in 2002, scientists at CERN successfully created thousands of cold atoms of antimatter in two experiments called Athena and ATRAP. They were able to create the antimatter in a cold state, meaning moving slow enough for observation before the antimatter atoms met regular matter and annihilated, thus proving the existence of antimatter. So you're saying matter takes over antimatter, and that's why we have to slow it down and freeze it so we can actually see it before it gets taken before over touch, by matter? No, they touch and explode. and they Explode, they, and they, then they, become yeah. nothing? I guess, yeah. What? They turn into energy. Okay, they have they to. Because the whole like you grow up in school knowing like uh, energy is never destroyed or created; it just gets changed. It changes, right? right. Okay. So antimatter, right. matter, meet. Okay. Boom! They annihilate each other, causing energy. Right. This is all well and good, but if you remember the book Angels and Demons, we were just talking about this mm. by author Dan Brown. The main character Robert Langdon searches for an antimatter bomb. Remember, when matter and antimatter come into contact with one another, a flash of energy occurs. Now that we've found and sustained antimatter, could the angels and demons scenario play out in real life? What if some rogue agency gets their dirty hands on enough antimatter to destroy us all? What precautions is CERN taking to prevent this from happening? Besides the fact that the amount of money it takes to create enough antimatter to make a bomb that would do any sort of damage is in the billions, plural. Of dollars, why is it because of how expensive it is to get to Correct. make it? To, like the technology to make it, yeah. And the technology to make it is required by like what's it required to make? Like what what does it need to, to make do? antimatter? How do you make antimatter? Don't know. Okay, CERN does. <laughs> There's a video I watched. It's called "We Are Happy at CERN." And this is by CERN scientists and interns, and I'll post a, a link to this video in the show notes. So they also sing about the glorious leader? Oh, they sing, but it's to Pharaoh Williams' song, Happy. Uh, huh. Again, this is a video of interns and scientists at CERN singing and dancing and acting crazy to Pharaoh Williams' song, Happy. It's like a, a weird promo video or marketing video. At one point in this silly song and dance, there's a clip of a, a quirky-looking CERN scientist with long white hair, a bushy beard, and wire rimmed glasses sitting at his desk mm -hmm. in his office, dancing and playfully waving a handwritten sign that reads, We are happy at CERN. Seems fun. But around the scientist's neck hangs two large placards. It's the whole six. One reads, Bond number one, and the other placard reads, Mandela. People figured out that if you take the name of the very first James Bond which is a man named Barry Nelson, and take the second placard around the, the scientist's uh, neck, which says Mandela, and you combine them, you get Nelson Mandela, which plays directly into the theory that experiments being conducted at CERN are directly responsible for what's called the Mandela effect. This is the third option. Now, we covered the Mandela effect in Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast episode 22, it's our most played episode. Definitely check it out. Uh, I'll leave a link to that uh, in the show notes as well. Now, the term Mandela Effect was coined in 2010 by author, researcher, and paranormal enthusiast Fiona Broom. Mandela Effect is said to happen when someone, or even, or even a large group of people, have a distinct memory of something that other people claim has never happened in this reality. Large groups of people remember a certain event, details about that certain event, and dates and time that event happened, but history books, newspapers, magazines, and archives all tell a completely different story. Here's an example which actually gave rise to the term Mandela Effect. Tons of people remember Nelson Mandela dying in the 1980s in a South African prison, and they even watched his funeral on television instead of what actually happened in this reality, Oscar, where Mandela died in 2013 at the beautiful Houghton Estate in Johannesburg, South Africa. 
I myself remember him dying in 1984, and I clearly remember talking about it in school. Other popular Mandela effects are the Bernstein Bernstein Bears controversy. There's some Star Wars Mandela effect, like, does Darth Vader say, Luke, I am your father, or does he say, no, I am your father? There are TV commercial examples, global company logo examples, where they change overnight, and whether or not Freddie Mercury of Queen sings, of the world, at the very end of We Are the Champions. Hint, he does. He does sing it. In my reality, anyway. Also, uh, I want to say about the Mandela effect, uh, I feel really bad that Nelson Mandela's greatest contribution to our future in history books is going to be to this thing. <laughs> Not that he ended up poor side for his country. Continue. <laughs> well, we know that one of CERN's Atlas's detectors' objectives is to search for other dimensions. Its objective is to search for other dimensions. Did CERN succeed in creating an opening to another dimension and we somehow slipped into it without realizing and all the the Mandela effects are actually a result of that slip? Many believe it's possible, if not probable. And there's a well-documented example um, of this that Mm -hmm. has to coincide, that actually coincides directly with CERN. There's a time warp that caused an Iberworld Airbus A330-300 passenger plane flown by Air Comet and all 170 passengers and crew on board to instantly move 5,500 miles off course on November 1, 2009. This was reported in the press, although no concrete reason was given as to why this mysterious event happened. On that day, November 1, 2009, scientists at CERN supposedly, accidentally, sent out shockwaves of energy that distorted our Earth's magnetic field and shot off a time wave towards the core of our planet. Scientific tracking showed that the wave of energy veered exactly towards Bolivia and then headed out towards the space above South America. This is when the wave hit the Airbus which was set to land in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, but instead found itself instantly over Santa Cruz in uh, Tenerife, Spain. I think I said that right. Tenerife, Spain. No one was injured. Immediately after the incident was reported, CERN shut down the Large Hadron Collider due to a bird dropping a piece of bread into some of the the collider's outdoor machinery and causing malfunction. What the fuck? Really? I read so, somewhere, sometime, it could have been a made-up thing, could have been in a fiction movie, but I thought it maybe it could be new, so I'm not 100%. I remember one time, one of these super colliders could not be, maybe it wasn't CERN either, by the way, since there's so many. Um, they had like a raccoon problem in the in the actual... In the actual, I think I read that too, yeah. Right? It's not, yeah. not something I'm making up here? Somebody they had like a raccoon there. that broke in there somehow and was like lost and trying to hide his food or something. And it was like a raccoon harmlessly in the super collider. That's crazy. That was the answer. It was reminding me of that. But a bird's b- b- bread? That was CERN's reason why they shut down the Hadron Collider that day. I mean, I know they have or sensitive stuff, sensitive incident. instruments. I get that. This seems like a foiled by bread. I mean, it seems a little, insa- a little yes. insane. Yeah, and this is in the news. It's in the newspapers. This is verifiable that this did happen to this plane. Okay. This did happen to this plane. This plane traveled across an ocean. 5,500 miles was supposed, uh, supposed to land in oh. Santa Cruz, Bolivia, but instantly found itself in Santa Cruz, Tenerife, Spain. T E N E. So two different R-I-F-E Santa Cruz, Spain. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. So it was reported, but no concrete evidence was ever f- given as to why this happened. Mm-hmm. The plane was detained for either eight or eighteen hours. I read, and then it was. I'm curious. Uh, left to go back on to. Did uh, CERN uh, did CERN activate or did something interesting on the day the Malaysian flight went? Or when? Oh man, I don't know. Or, I, you know, after all this research, I didn't even think to look that up. What? How did I think of that? I don't know. Okay. Well, we, we could save that. 
okay. for another time. Let's combine the shows here. Because, yeah, we didn't even get into CERN's quest for dark matter Wait. and the implications therein. Um, the hole just gets deeper. So, what's and dark matter? And, and what? Because dark matter is different from antimatter. It is. What and is supposedly dark matter theoretically? Then why people say it? What, you can't say something you can't explain even theoretically. What is it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what dark matter is. Exactly. Fine, I'm look it up. What's I dark matter? I stopped there. I stopped there. I figured I had enough for this episode. So real quick while I look this up, um, this is the one you said this is the option you believe to affect the most. You and Lexi both said this. I'm curious as to why you guys see this as the most probable of the, of the, uh, of the Wh- options. And which is that again? You know, because we said at the top there's four different theoretical conspiracies that could happen. One is the destruction of the world. One is uh, bringing gods or demons in, from another dimension here. And then the third one, this one, is Mandela Effect. It's the reason why we're forgetting these things that we thought was something else before, right? These little right. time changes. Mandela shift. Effect, right, time right. slips. So why is this one your number one as far as what you think is happening or what CERN is creating? Because if CERN is really, and they are, cranking out this magnitude of energy – magnetism and so forth all over the globe so at CERN in Geneva and at these other locations located throughout the world including here in Illinois who knows what's that doing to the time space who knows what's happening to the time space with all these large bursts of energy um, happening I doubt the earth could contain it all even though they're buried Um, I doubt the earth could contain all of it so what's it doing no one knows what the fuck it's doing Okay. No one knows the fuck it's doing. So that's why I say the Mandela effect for me is probably the, the most likely result of these experiments. Um, because who knows what it's doing to our time space? Uh, all Lexi? these massive bursts of energy and the colliding of all these subatomic particles and bringing all these. Uh, what am I trying to bring all these? unknown until now particles into existence even for a short time who knows what that's doing Mm -hmm. what do you think i think that it's like the most like possible because like yeah they could be like summoning demons and stuff but like they're also like researching like dimensions and other universes so there's more of a likely chance that we were all like transported to a parallel universe before summoning a demon you know. Yeah. And who's to say they're summoning demons on purpose? Yeah. What if these entities are just a byproduct of opening be. a wormhole or finding a new galaxy or a new universe or I mean if we I mean if we find someone across instead of across another planet. And it, no, we're we're beyond other planets with this. No, I'm stuff. saying and, and uh, like that, but I'm saying just instead we're Finding them across, you know, different universes, okay, or like a different reality or dimension. Why don't we just call them aliens? They're still pretty much not from here, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, you know, it feels like they're aliens. I feel like uh, I feel like this might be the most possible of the three as well. I'm with you guys, I guess. The Mandela effect. I, th- I think it'll be all of them, honestly. But I think uh, this one's the most possible because um, I feel like. Errors like these come in waves, and in many ways, much much like a, like a disease in your body or how nothing goes to shit immediately. It takes a while to go to shit. Like you, there are signs that happen before it. There are hiccups. There are things that break down before everything breaks down. Like you don't know a system is corrupt until after years of corruption. Um, for example, I'm using a lot of different things here. But like I feel like that's most likely, like these little – Waves and interactions with our space time is uh, is creating probably like it's probably compounding on itself. Maybe it's getting worse. I can't see it getting better unless we stop. But True. it might be too late already. Maybe the the snowball has already been rolling down, you know, the, the mountain. And by the time it gets to the, to the ground, whether we like it or not, it's going to be this huge boulder of snow. Right? So I don't know. It could be that, or the more we do it, or the more it'll just happen. Maybe. Not the same or worse and, or better. I don't know. But yeah, I think that's the most likely one because it just seems like when – because reality doesn't just break. And if it breaks, it breaks completely and we would be dead. We would be different. Mm. Not that even, but different. Or maybe our matter, our carbons and our atoms and shit will be the opposite of what it is now. In which case it's inconceivable to imagine what that looks like. So I don't know. 
maybe we'll be dead in every sense of the word. Like we're not even ghosts; we're just dead completely, right? Because even the whatever there is after life, maybe that's that too, uh, right? Does that go somewhere? Could be. I don't know. It's just interesting, but yeah, I think it's the most it's most likely scenarios. I, I remember the the one I would say the, and this is so weird to say the clearest memory I have as a kid is sitting in a classroom and staring at the year 1984 written on the board. Hmm. It is etched into every part of my brain. Subconscious, conscious. I just I just see myself staring at a chalkboard with 1984 written on it in chalk. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what the significance is. But according to this, Mandela Effect started with you know the death of Mandela. Did he die in 1984? Right, there's something. A lot, there's a lot of. I things. truly believe, in my heart of hearts, that something happened in 1984. I don't know what, but it is etched in my brain. It will forever be etched in my brain that year. I don't know what it was. Do Nothing you know, tragic happened to me personally. Do you know what happened? I had a fucking great childhood. Do you know what he happened? He was born. Yes. What? I was born in 1984. Oh, there you go. No, yeah, I, I don't know what it is with that year, man. I was in I, my mind. Something so happened in that year. I am. Gonna, okay, I'm not just playing advocate. I'm not doing this for the show. You know, I don't like hyping anything up. You're the sensationalist. You can advertise this however you want. Um, for many years, especially the last 10, I've always thought that there's something strange with 1984. Are you serious? Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I dismissed it many times because maybe it's my ego grandstanding me because I was born in 1984 or is it or is it or then I think back on it like or is it because one of the most famous quoted books of all time is called 1984 one of my favorite books yeah and George Orwell specifically pick that why that year and I'm sure he has an answer I'm sure someone has his uh, written notes the diary that something that he knows I don't know what but it's a very specific number to name a t- the title of your most famous yeah, 19, work. Not 1980, 1970. It's right, or the, no, it's less than the middle of a decade. Less than the middle of a year in a decade. Is that the year? He, did he randomly saw those numbers on the license plate when he was trying to figure out the title of it? <laughs> um, you know, I come up with stuff like that all the time. And, um, and then, but, but I see weird things like that, like this thing you're saying. I've seen other examples, you know, of art or like uh, a regime's first day of decline started in 1984 i would read that like 1984 that's strange or like i would see that this weird uh, serial killer started in 1984 or ended in 19 like i would see 84 everywhere mm. or more often than I, than I want to and i don't know if it's anything because i never it's never enough it's never enough to even warrant exactly. uh, saying it here so exactly it's not enough to even say it here but it feels like it is now because we're mentioning it, so. something about 1984 Something strange. Contact at ChicagoGhostPodcast.com. Do you have uh, some significance to the year 1984? What is that? That could be a show for us. We can research that, like find things in history. Just anything that happened on that day. Anything in arts or anything in theoretical, whatever, what you just discovered. We can add that to the list. And just write a bunch of things and see if we can shape anything, even if it's just theoretical. I love it. It's a good idea. It could be a show in itself. Just call it 1984, Call course. it 1984. I mean, what else can you do? Very good. <laughs> yeah. So what did you think of the topic? Interesting? I mean, it just it's too interesting. It's like um, <laughs> it's like what Pat Oswalt said about Trump. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure everyone knows. You know, like, we can't wait to hear all the comedians tell all the jokes once Trump got elected and inaugurated, right? He's like, but he gives too much, inf- he gives too much material. We don't know. By the time we do a joke about his shitty hiring, he's done seven other crazy-ass <laughs> things that we can't keep up. Like, it's too much with CERN. I can't, I can't it do really, it. It really is. Where do I fucking start? Exactly. I, I still Where do believe. you start? Where do you end? Fuck the end. I, where to start? I just want to start. end this topic. Just want to start it. <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah. Let's just get because we we got the conversation going. Did we? I think so. Lexi, do you think we did? I think I we're think just saying that because it's time to. Yeah. How yeah. how are we doing on time? No, no, I'm just fucking with you. Oh, uh, it's like two. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good stuff. Maybe we'll revisit it one day. I thought I thought uh, pff, should be a three parter, man. Yeah, and like I said, we didn't even talk about dark matter. We we barely scratched the surface on the antimatter. CERN actually. Uh, 
may have disproved the existence of ghosts. We didn't even get into that. Fuck you. This so is a we'll ghost podcast. To, what the fuck we'll have to save That's that for another thing. day. What Keep thing? the listeners hanging. No. You're leaving me hanging, bitch. <laughs> um, so what do you think? Close it to an end? Bring it to an end? I'm bringing a lot of things here. <laughs> <laughs> you could be there forever, I'm telling you. So I'm going to read one of the many different little things. Okay. Real quick, just yeah. one yeah. sentence thing about dark matter. Dark matter is a theorized form of matter that may account for approximately 80%, 80% of the mass right. energy of matter in the, observable, in the observable universe. And about a quarter of the observable universe's total mass energy. Um, that's, there are others that have slightly different things because obviously we don't really 100% know. But like CERN on the website has things on it. Uh, CFHT Lens, uh, HowStuffWorks.com, which is a great place. Uh, yeah, I like How Stuff Works. Yeah, I like yeah. NASA, Smithsonian, real places. Talk about it, and they'll have slightly different variations of what it could be or what it is for real. I don't know. But yeah, and some of the implications if we actually find and contain it, you know. But do we want to? I think they do. I think certain. Also, does. Um, the idea of science and scientific discovery, we are blessed. Where we are right now. Okay? We have plumbing. Yes. We have, we understand when and where we can see the best sky of our lives. We can understand biology in a way that, um, that makes the creature of the Black Lagoon look like a piece of shit. Okay? (laughs) And I love that movie. Um, so, I think we're very blessed. And I think we're, um, the age of discovery is waning for the public. And I think it's it's a little sad, but it's so true. We're so comfort. I know that people who are dying in in Syria, for example, poor Syria, <laughs> or Africa, whatever. I get that. There are real dangers. I'm not saying that. I'm right. saying the people in the first world, second world, even. They were very comfortable in knowing what we know and knowing that there's nothing beyond that. How much more can there be beyond what we know already? Right. That is way wrong, guys. The reason this podcast exists, among others like this, is to... Do what CERN is trying to do, except that we're doing it theoretically. We're doing it on our own experiences. Not that we have degrees to back it up, but we have years to back it up. And uh, we're doing it way different than they ever will be. But we're doing the same thing, and we should always be searching. And uh, what is – you can't know what you're going to discover until you fucking find it. And that is what CERN is doing. Science is what CERN is doing, except that they're spending billions of dollars. That's it. You know? So – it's well, well said. It's a positive thing. That's why I love CERN. That's why I love CERN. That's a, that's great. So you don't know, like you don't go, you don't make a super collider intending to solve what the next toaster is going to look like. You go in there to discover what you can discover, and then find out what you can apply it to. Yeah. So. Well, I, I guess maybe I'll leave on this question. Um, do you think human human minds only <laughs> could have thought of? developed and executed the technology that's found at CERN. Do you want me to answer that? You just want to leave that question hanging? Maybe we'll just, maybe we'll just let it hang and let listeners think for do themselves. Do I get to answer next show? And what do you think? Answer. No, well, if you want to leave it hanging, we don't have to talk about it. But so, yeah, I mean, think about that. Are human minds solely responsible for thinking of creating and executing this massively advanced technology found at CERN. I think and it's we'll possible. The, oh, okay. We're answering. Sorry, I'm fucking around. <laughs> so I'm, we'll fucking around. I'm fucking around. I'm fucking around. Listeners to decide. Yeah, okay. Because I don't think so. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> someone take us home. All right then. You want to save your soul from hell, riding on our range. <laughs> Cowboy, change your ways today. With us you will ride Ride at the devil's Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay for work. Can you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Okay can for you? work. Is anybody in there? Yeah, I can. The doy. Okay. The doy doy. Okay. Did you beat that guy, by the way? Or no? Yes. I... Oh, you beat him twice? Oh, wait, no, I actually lost. Oh, you lost? Yes. No, right. kids. Oscar, you can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can. All right. Uh, so, Lexi, you got the So Damn Paranormal. Yes. 
Are you sure? You could you could pry your eyes away from the phone for two seconds. Well, yes, you don't need you, she doesn't need her eyes to say it. I guess, I, guess she, I could just see. Yeah, so damn paranormal. <laughs> it's fucking great. No, it's great. So goddamn more whiskey. <laughs> oh, thank you. My name is Blanche. My name's Blanche, and I want you to take off your trousers. <laughs> Blanche, that's a that's an old that's an old name that's kind of been out of circulation, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. My and name's Blanche, and I smoke one? Paul Malls. What's another one? I uh, would say uh, Edna, Betsy, Betsy, Edna, Edna, Ethel, Ethel. Wow. Ethel, Jackie. Yeah. No, Jackie's Jack still. Hey. Jack Hey, Shantae. No, we're not talking about black names. Um, Why? Yeah. I'm you, just kidding. I'm just, are you racist? Should we talk about Mexican names? Guadalupe? No, there's Guadalupe? plenty of those. Araceli? Yep, we have a lot of that. Chewy? Chewy, yeah. <laughs> I have a cousin named Chewy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. I'm see. What else? Another one. Uh, Martha? No, definitely Martha. Yeah, right. Martha. Verna? Verna. Right? I love that name. Verna. You like Verna? I like Verna. I like V names. like Violet, too. I like Violet. Yeah. Violet's pretty. Um, this was a Victoria, but uh, Victoria people. Well, there's some Vickies out there, right? Because Vickies. Uh, I think so. Yeah, okay. Fuck Victoria. Wow, she doesn't like Victoria. Well, then, why are you saying? What's fuck all the Victoria? What's all the shade? Like the why are you oh, throwing okay. shade? I thought she was throwing shade at some Victoria that I'm supposed to know. I'm like, I don't know any Victoria other than yeah. my cousin, Alexis. <laughs> Alexis. Yeah. I hate By the way, in uh, in um, in Mexico or whatever, Alexis is typically a boy's name. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I know yeah. two or three Alexises who are boys. I know one huh. Alexis that's a boy. Yeah. And he has a vagina. He, he no. clearly has a vagina. Yeah. He had a wiener. <laughs> had? Last time you cut it off? He had? Yeah. Well, what the fuck know. you do? What the fuck you do no. with this guy's wiener? I didn't do anything to his wiener. Okay. All right. Let's what's, a, what's a boy's name that's old? Uh, Phil. 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 Ugh. Yeah. Ashley. I don't like that name either. Yeah, I don't like Phil. Ashley. Phil's are douchebags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley's a boy's name? Used to be in the old days. Stan. 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 <laughs> Alex. Alex? No, no, Alex is still very useful. Yeah, they you still high? use it. Yeah, you're fucking what are you? Oh, are we talking about old boys? Yeah, yeah, old, old names. Boy names. Old boy names. Cliff. Cliff. You don't get that's Cliffs a, that's anymore. That's a good one. That's a good one. Stan and Cliff just seem like uh, yeah. they own a used car dealership from 1970. I still have another girl's one, Eunice. Eunice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one's ever, I haven't seen a Eunice huh. past uh, long, younger than 60. What was the girl's name from uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate? V- Veruca. That's not a name. It was. Is that a common name at some Veruca point? Veruca Salt. Veruca. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Beth. Beth. You don't get Beth anymore. Well, Elizabeth. That's still, that's still a popular name. You think so? It's no, no one likes being called Beth from Elizabeth. That's the thing. <laughs> you know? I, every Elizabeth I've ever met don't like being called Beth. Don't ever call him Beth. <laughs> Beth asks for the manager at a restaurant. Yeah, that's the kind of Beth that exists out there. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Beth, uh, Beth, and beyond. <laughs> um, um, one more boy's name. One more boy's name. Um, Do you think Tim? Sinclair? No, that's the last name. Do you think Tim is still? Timothy? No, it's still very useful. You think so? I almost said Nate or Nathan, but that's very useful too. Yeah. People yeah. use that a lot. Um, Jason, yeah, still very useful. Obviously, I'm seeing one, although you, your your name is getting aged out too. I think I think Jason is getting phased out. I know you're old as fuck. I mean, anyone Thanks. below the age of forty is not named Jason. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Anthony's still very popular. A lot of Tonys out there. Uh, Richard. Richard. Dick. Dick. It's, it's getting older. Um, yeah, yeah, I would go with that. Yeah, that's a good one. Huh. Someone's just yelling in their fucking phone, like, this clearly ass <laughs> name that no one said. Fuck before. you guys, my name's Rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I say fuck you to you, sir. <laughs> Dick. I said it extra gravelly, too. Um, Since you're drinking that whiskey. Whiskey. So I okay. drink my whiskey. Yeah, you barely fucking. Strong. You drank like two ounces. Every time I drink it, I'm, like, my face. Does like a, a you weird, wanted it stronger? Like my face goes numb, and the left side of my body hurts. <coughs> my liver's Something asking me like questions. <laughs> All right, fuck the names. Dolores, Morty. Dolores, Dolores. nice. That's my name Dolores, nice. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 uh. Oh, God. 
<laughs> that is the name of her wart. Oh, Did you know she had one such there? Such an ugly word. Wart. <laughs> wart. Oh. <laughs> that so caught me off guard. <laughs> I had it since Honey. I was a little baby child. You Honey. might want to have that look. It might be cancer. You might want to look into that. I Honey. did. The doctors can't remove it either. You can give me five minutes and a shot of whiskey and a knife. We'll get it out. No, I yeah, like Yeah, have her. you seen Four Rooms? You know, chop, off, chop it off there and we'll switch. Oh, motion. that's right. Yeah. But no one's giving me 10 Gs to do it. No. I'm doing it out of the kindness of my heart. <laughs> yeah, you, you sound Dolores very kind. Dolores is my friend. Oh, Dolores. God, gross. My stomach. She's remember that Seinfeld attached, episode? Though. When, like, uh, what she was? Because he didn't know. He didn't know the girl's name. That the girl he was dating for the longest time. He's like, and the only clue she gave him is like, well, what do you, you know, like, what it's, do you think if my if your name rhymes with a part of a female? Anatomy? Oh, that's right. And he's like, a um, mulva, mulva, <laughs> <laughs> dimple. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, at the end when she storms out, he's like, oh right, Dolores. That yeah. didn't. It doesn't sound like a clitoris. Oh yeah, yeah, got it. Um, do you know the three streets in Chicago named after a woman's uh, private area? Yeah, um, Melvina, because I live on that. Mm-hmm. I live on Melvina. Uh, Regina. Is it Regina? There's not a street in Chicago called Regina. No, Regina, like Regina, Regina, no. isn't it? What's what's that? I know it's something like that. It's it's, um, uh, it's Paulina, Paulina. Yeah, Melvina, Paulina, and, and Lunt. Lunt. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the long one. Do you know there's parts of our bodies called the weenus and the flagina? This is the weenus. This is the flagina. The skin under the elbow and the skin in between your index and thumb. Are you serious? Yeah. That is so gross. The more you know. <laughs> Rainbow. Ring. All right. Thank you for that little anatomy lesson. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I learned that from Dr. Oz. <laughs> Lexi, she, when she, when and she now with all the credits gone. <laughs> when she's not playing on her phone, she really contributes some shit. Do you think they call him Draws, and, uh, Draws? on set? Dr. Oh, Oz. Huh? Draws, the DR for Dr. Oz. Draws. Dra- oh, the Draws. The Draws. If they don't, they should. They should now. Legit. I hope someone on the crew is listening to the show. All right. You ready for this shit? I'm ready. All right. CERN. <laughs> Certainly. Hello and welcome to the Super... CERN! <laughs> it's everywhere. It's, it's going to kill us all. It's all around us. Have you seen Phenomenon? Remember that movie? Yes. With Ben Affleck? No. You don't remember that movie? No. I'm not drunk yet. It no, it wasn't called Phenomenon. It was called... Was it Phenomenon? Phantoms. Oh. Phantoms. Oh, yeah. When yeah he was okay. a sheriff? Yeah, he was a sheriff of that shitty coal town. Little town, town, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenon. What the fuck was that going? Oh, that's a John Travolta movie. That's a different movie. Like, look at her face. Look at her face right now. Look at her face right now. What's wrong with her face? What's wrong with her face? I'm gonna drink you a drink. What's wrong with her face? Your drink. What is wrong with her face? What's wrong with your face? Oh no. She hasn't, like she hasn't had my cum in a while. That's why. Oh. Um, that's the best answer I could think of at the moment. That's not what's wrong with my face. I know. <laughs> I think I got enough of your cum. Mm, okay. And we're right. making Jay uncomfortable here. Well, you started it. I did start it. What episode number are we on? But I like making him uncomfortable. I love you. I love you, too. What, what was episode that? are we on? I don't fucking know. You 63 know. or 64? I think 69. It's, I think you're right. 64. Jesus, that's good, hon. Thank you. Oh, 62. That's two fucking knowledge bombs you dropped that we didn't know you knew. 64. Yeah, episode 64. <laughs> you could have asked me, it, given me like a trillion years to think about it, I would not remember that. I mean, it's kind of weird that you wouldn't know that, but, you know... <laughs> Oh, you mean because I edit the show? And you, I, you know, you're kind of in, intimately and intricately involved in this. Yeah. This, I still don't know my mom's fucking birthday. Sweaty. This thing we do. I think I had him balled up. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Guys, well, it's because your mom hates white people. She does. She likes me, I think. Yeah, not, well, Leo finally no, gets, got to me, Leo got to finally warm up with her. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, she, he slept nice. next to us while we're watching Moana on TV. Aww. Yeah, for the first time. He with stole me. my sock. He stole your sock. That's cute. He stole her sock. Wow. It kept tickling you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's cute. That's enough. You can't show a kid with weakness like that, honey. I d- it tickled. <laughs> you can't do it. You just can't show weakness. Tough it out. All right. Ready? Want to countdown? It's the fun. I assume we're taking a break at some point. <laughs> oh, yeah. The final countdown. Yeah. Are you ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> I, were you waiting for me? I don't know what the hell you're doing there. I was waiting. All right. Five, four, 
three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> one. <laughs>